Victoria for one out, one back. Thursday mornings at 10 and then on podcast. Oh, hi, I'm Maria from Sesame Street. And Elma's Elma. And we're here to talk about driveways. Driveways can be dangerous for children. Or little red monsters. So it's important for parents to always watch their children around them. Yeah, driveways are for cars, not for playing. That's right, Elmo. Play only in safe places away from driveways because people in cars may not see you. Uh, Elmo sees you, Maria. Tag, you're in. Oh, here I come, Elmo. <laughs> Remember, driveways are like roads. Always supervise, separate, and see. Learn more at kidsafevic.com.au. Your club, Craigie Burn Sporting Club. The Sporty is now your prime function venue. The breathtaking new function room is now open. Already it's hosted wedding receptions, engagement parties, christenings, birthdays and seminars. Up to 300 guests. And the reviews have been awesome. Why not make an appointment with the Sporty Function team to plan your special occasion? Craigie Burn's best functions are now happening at the Sporty. Craigie Burn Sporting Club. Find out more at craigieburnsc.com.au. Correct way is Sunday's racing review. Elite break, well supported, and the punters get the money in the last. Great day as uh, Elisa Hinch settling up at Elite Drake. Look, it was unbelievably dark, but I know this horse inside and out, and the worse the conditions get, the better he goes, and he loves the rain, so as it got worse and worse, our smiles just got bigger and bigger. This Sunday, Brendan Delaney and David Gately will join me for the full wrap of finals day at Flemington. RSN 927's Correct Weight, Sunday morning from 8, thanks to the Tab. Who are you backing? The winter issue of Ladies in Racing magazine is out now with Winx on the cover. Inside, an eight-page Winx special packed with stories and photos. Plus, stories on the Wakeful Club's Lady of Racing, jockey Christine Pauls, Jamie Carr, and Harness Racing's fearless Reigns women. Ladies in Racing, for those who love the glamour and stories of females in racing. Six issues, starting with the winter edition, for only $59, including postage in Australia. Call 1300-783-112 or see Ladies in Racing magazine.com.au. What a week we had on the Late Show. Well, first there was Monday, then there was Tuesday, then there was... No, seriously, we had a great week. Great guests, good fun, the Culinary World Cup. We did it all this week, and if you missed any of it, you can check it out on the podcast part of the website. Make sure you do that. Enjoy your weekend. I'm going to rest up and then be back uh, with a vengeance. 11 o'clock, Monday night. Hope to see you then. On RSN 927. When footy's done and dusted, the Weekend Footy Wrap, Monday mornings at 10. It's the round in review from the footy punter's point of view. Andrew Cuse and Adam White deliver the Weekend Footy Wrap, Monday mornings at 10, and then on podcast. Get back to work. But I am working. What, your latest Instagram post? I'm lodging a free doll before you dig inquiry online. Visit 1100.com.au to use this free service or call 1100 during business hours. The smell of baking. Routley's Bakery is so good. Why not grab a Routley's slice to go with your coffee? Make it a classic apple slice, a bee sting, or a vanilla slice. That's absolute custard heaven. You can make a move on a muffin or go all the way and bite into a wicked Nutella donut. Routley's Bakery's right across Geelong, as well as Eltona, Newport, Williamstown, and Ascot Vale. Fancy a Routley's pie? Oh, of course you do. RSN 927 conducts competitions almost every day. Every contest is run according to our general competition rules. There are even competitions which have specific terms and conditions. If you would like to read our general competition rules or any special terms and conditions, look for the links on the competitions page at rsn.net.au or ask for a copy during business hours at the RSN 927 reception desk. Or SN Carnival 2. It's women's RC rules are doing what they love. The faster talk, don't mess with them because they can get rough. Are you ready for the challenge? Are you ready for the match? It's the call of the game. It's the VFL Women's Match of the Day. On our SN Carnival. It's On RSN Carnival 2, WARFradio.com, the VFL app, and streaming live via Facebook.com forward slash WARF Radio with a video stream. This is the VFL Women's Match of the Day, part two of our double header. Today, we are bringing you the Richmond Tigers 
taking on the Western Bulldogs at VU Witten Oval. McCauley Award and Jess Kennedy out there in the centre for the toss of the coin. And it's been won by McCauley Award. She will kick to the right of screen for those watching via the video stream, going towards the scoreboard or Geelong Road end with the bridge in the background. And Kiwi, please don't tell me Richmond have changed a few numbers. No, sorry. I meant to say that some of the players have changed their regular numbers. For example, oh, Phoebe Monaghan is now number two. She was always number 88 for Richmond. Ah, yes, from last year. Remember last year they had... Uh, Numbers in the 70s and 80s, etc. Yeah, so I just wondered if it was something to do with the AFL team coming in. Sometimes some of the teams <laughs> use the low numbers for that. And the it's a way to make a commentator panic. Oh, all the Sorry. numbers have changed. What, 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 what? <laughs> Didn't mean to sound like that, though. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, me. And for the Bulldogs, of course, we just see them warming up at the moment. The famous long sleeves of uh, Kirsten McLeod. Let's see if she'll be in the back line or forward line today, depending on what Sean Kapaner will do as coach. And, of course, Tom Hunter coaching Richmond today, as we know, he'll be coaching their AFLW side. And let, let's ask about the conditions today. Who do you think, at, actually, besides your tip, who do you think that suits better today with the ground looking in picture-perfect conditions? And, of course, at the moment, it's a very pleasant 18 degrees. I think um, both teams, uh, it'll benefit. I'm hoping with the Bulldogs sort of like um, moving the ball quickly, it'll help them play fast and not getting bogged down. There's been no rain sort of thing. And but I, again, Richmond have a taller forward line, so they'll be playing well with that. I was going to say, I think of speeds is like Bailey Hunt. You throw in Sarah Jolly as well as just yep. a, a couple of names off the top of my head. They've got plenty of players who can do run and carry. Yeah, exactly. So I'm hoping... Looks good um, so far, but I think, I mean, conditions like this, it's literally, it's perfect conditions for football, uh -huh. as they say. So, Cliche time. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh, amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and yes, yeah, so I, I mean, it's, it, I think it's good because it means that there's nothing sort of uh, favouring either side. And we're hopefully going to get a really nice even match from two relatively strong teams. Well, we're just about ready to go here on RSN Carnival 2, WARFradio.com and Facebook.com forward slash WARF Radio and the VFL app. Starting in the ruck is Gabrielle Seymour. It's hard. For the Richmond Celine Tigers. Rudy and Kim Rennie look really similar, so it's hard to pick. And we are underway. Seymour beating out Celine Moody in this contest. Ball hit the ground. Immediately going to ground was Brant Catasano. Trying to get her hit away. Wasn't successful in doing so. Stacks in the mill jumping on there. McLeod has been thrown on the ball immediately. And we're going to call for a ball up. Of course, everyone will be looking around, trying to look for the famous number three of Katie Brennan to see where they're going to be playing her today. And uh, we'll get to Kiwi on that in just a moment's time as Brant Catasano goes with a hand pass. Now here comes Brennan. We just mentioned her on the wing on the grandstand side. No booze yet from the crowd. Across to Makua Chow, who had it momentarily. Dropped the football. Was under pressure from Hutt on that occasion. Coughed the football up. Now going back to Hannah Scott. Had to get rid of it before she got claimed. Ball out on the wing on the far side of the ground. The Doug Hawkins wing. They're all circling the pack. Kennedy's looking on there for the Tigers. Can't get in there. Can't get it extracted. Coming over the top, Mary Sandra. And we'll call for a... A free kick to the Bulldogs early. Pulled that one out of there. As opposed to a lot of ball umps that we had in the game at Windy Hill. Now goes long inside 50. McCua Chow was backing back there. Had it momentarily, then dropped it. At the feet, the hand pass out using the agency of Dempsey. They decide to switch play now. It was called to go wide. Works out okay. Brown Catasano with the football. Now potting up Rebecca Miller. Miller now on the right boot. Going to the halfback flank. Grandstand side of the ground. Flying through the air was Campbell. Knocked away from her hands. The ball will go over the boundary line and out of bounds. Early impressions from match analyst Lisa Kiwi Roper. Yeah, I think um, Alec Mature would, might want to put some grip on her hands. She's had two chances and she should have held the ball. But yeah, the, that switch from Katie Brennan across to her, that first one, they would have been away if she had held on to that. Ball is thrown back into play, brought down by Gabrielle Seymour, trying to come through there. Grace Campbell tried to throw the tackle, gave it off. Tigers now attacking up the wing, only for it to be intercepted by McLeod, who read it best. McLeod with the football. In front of the grandstand here at Witten Oval. Pulls the kick. Works out okay. Spots up the intended target. Mary Sandrell. Sandrell with the footy. She's about 65 metres out from home. Decides to work it sideways. Goes okay. Now spotting up the target there. In uh, Rudin, who now goes shorter still to find Hannah Scott. Going short again. Inside 50. Off hands, whoop, nearly copping one high on the way through there. Rebecca Miller. Umpire blows the whistle and calls for a ball up. Apologies to those watching online as well. It's the second time in a row for the first two minutes and two games. I've left the graphic up saying what game it is, which might block the football. Whoops. 
<laughs> it's a ball. good graphic. <laughs> I spent five minutes doing that graphic as the ball is now close to the boundary line. Coming in there is McLeod to try and lay a tackle and we'll go over and out. Oh, just a little bit of aggro there. A few choice words. Match analyst today also is Neve Felton. I think um, Kirsten McLeod looks primed to have a really big game yet again. Um, she's taken a really strong mark, um, stopping Richmond rebound out of defence and now re laid a really strong tackle as well. The ball is thrown back into play from behind on that occasion was Moody. Now trying to go towards their centre-half forward. Now centre-half back because it's taken by Kennedy for the Tigers. Puts it out towards the Doug Hawkins wing side of the ground. Makua Chowd is calling for it and receives it from Dempsey. Now decides to work wider. Still rejected on that occasion by Ashley Gunn. And she is one. And she sees the ball over the boundary line and out of bounds. And that means Kiwi will call for a throw-in on the other side of the ground. Yeah, that was well read. She was about a good metre and a half behind uh, the Richmond opponent and just read the flight of the ball and uh, managed to pick it off easy. Wait for the boundary umpire to come in and throw the ball back into play. Spinning back into play it is. Weaving around Kennedy. They cry ball. The umpire says, yep, you threw that one. And that means it's a free kick going the way of the doggies. Pulling the kick there. Gavilis. Wanted to go towards centre half forward. Intercepted by the Tigers. They'll switch it now towards centre wing. Grandstand side, McLeod over around the football. Coming in over the top there is, I think Crundle wearing the 36 instead of the 38 today. That's what we'll go with. And the umpire will ask for the football back. Ball is thrown up in the air. Ball on the ground. Brennan tried to pick it up, couldn't do so. McLeod beat her to it. Kick off the side of the boot, will dribble over the boundary line and out of bounds. I'll call for a throw-in. I don't think it touched anyone because I was wondering if that would be last disposal or not. Yeah, I've, I've just felt like it bubbled clean out. Yeah. So I, I can never remember I'd, the weird rules. I think that was missed by the umpires on that occasion. Seymour jumping too early in that contest. Umpire said it was fine. Trying to come through traffic there is Sarah Jolly. And Jolly now goes inside 50. Does it get through? No, it doesn't because waiting for it was Ward if it uh, got through the heavy traffic. But the Tigers managed to rebound. Brennan calling for it. Brennan to receive the football. No, she doesn't. She had to push several out of the way and she couldn't get it. Hannah Scott did. And Scott went with the old one-two. Received it back courtesy of the agency of McKay. Now goes inside 50 with the kick. Had to be good. Saw the intended target. It couldn't quite hang on to the football. That was Ward who went to ground. Got the hand pass out quickly to Danuccio. Danuccio towards the top of the square. Macau Chart is there as well. Rennie brought it to ground. Macau Chart's going to take it away for the Tigers. That's a bit of a worm burner of a kick though. But it does go a good 40 or 50 metres. Monaghan wants to try and pick up the football. Monaghan harassing harassing over the top of her opponent and Bailey Hunt. Umpire is circling, circling, blows the whistle and says no prior opportunity. Match analyst, Coach Kiwi. Yeah, look, you know, Bulldogs probably um, want to pick off some really good opponents when they go forward because it looks like Richmond have got two frees every time they come into the 50. So um, you need to put in a really good ball in there. No score either side as yet, as the ball now goes inside 50. Hunt was looking around, quick little hand pass out. Hurry kick was uh, smothered there by Jess Kennedy. McEwa Chow goes in there, gets it on the right boot for the Tigers. Goes out towards the halfback flank, Doug Hawkins wing side of the ground. Ball won't quite sit well for Emma Gunn. Emma Gunn still trying to go after the football. She goes to ground, Monaghan goes for support. Jumping in there as well is Gavilis, and the umpire says, I'll ask for the football back. We have gone uh, six minutes into this opening quarter and no score either side. Nee Felton. Yeah, I think um, going off what Kiwi said as well, like Bulldogs playing a lot in their half forward, but yeah, when they're kicking it into the 50 as we see now, not really much doing. I'm not sure that was a wise decision by the bull, by the Tigers full back there to try and go for the double-fisted punch instead of marking the football. That was Colwell and sees it shoveled in the end over the boundary line and out of bounds. And we'll call for a throw in next to the right hand point post. Geelong Road end of the ground. No score either side. 18 degrees outside at the moment in Melbourne. Beautiful Saturday twilight game. Quick hand pass away. Nearly intercepted courtesy of the agency of Gavilis. And once again, it's going to be stacks on the mill about 45 metres out from goal. Right on the bottom of it. With the red hair standing out is Grace Egan. Always helps to get the umpire's votes when you've got the bright hair there. <laughs> As. Coming out, McMahon. Awkward hand pass. Also in there, Louise Bibby. Umpire says, whoop, too high. Free kick. 
going the way of the Bulldogs. Outside of 50, they go with a hand pass. Now with it is Gavilas, who decides to pump it along the top of the goal square. Umpire says there's a push out. And it's going to be a free kick going the way of the Bulldogs. Let's see who he's going to give it to. Ward's gone to pick up the football. And we'll give it to her teammate, the number 24 in Kimberley. Rennie, your impressions on that, uh, Coach Kiwi? Yeah, definitely um, definitely a free kick, but just just a silly position. That was a one on three. Um, and, you know, the kick wasn't going to hit the target. So Richmond probably giving up an easy goal here. Kimberley Rennie from directly in front to put the first score on the board. Takes the time, does up the shoelaces. Eight minutes gone, first term, RSN Carnival 2, WARFradio.com, and the VFL app. Approaches close to the player on the mark, very lackadaisical, and then just puts it straight over the goal umpire's hat. Thank you very much. The Western Bulldogs, one straight six. Richmond, no score, eight and a half minutes gone in this first quarter. Nee Felton. Yeah, I think um, Bulldogs deserve that goal more for their work rate rather than actual positioning. Like Kiwi said, the... Um, kicking to a three-on-one, it's unfortunate for Richmond because they didn't have to panic and push because they had the numbers there. So, um, ball, yeah, predominantly being played, Bulldogs half forward, I think predominantly in Bulldog hands or at least um, kind of being directed by the Bulldogs. But, yeah, nothing... The the um, entries inside 50 do not really put a lot of confidence. <laughs> As a Bulldog supporter, it's um, a, bit, uh, a bit of deja vu all the time. As the ball is trapped in the middle of the ground. Now a hurry kick out of the pack. Kirsty Bailey Hunter just hacked it out. Only for it to be intercepted. Now it's sent a half back for the Tigers. And that is Kate Dempsey. Dempsey wants to work it towards the Doug Hawkins wing. Coming out to meet it and go for a run. Is Phoebe Monaghan. She goes long to Sabrina. Sabrina Frederick. you got to remember not to say Traub because now just Sabrina Frederick. I did practice that in the car here. Sabrina Frederick now goes towards the uh, 50 metre arc at the feet of and struggling to pick it up there is Imogene Milford. Imi Milford got turned over and the umpire said unfairly and it will be a free kick. Imogene Milford now going back to Grace Egan. Egan outside 50, about 55 metres out from goal. Decides to go inside 50, pop it up. Frederick's the meat in the sandwich, got punched away from her. Now a hurry kick out of the pack. I think it was by Tyler Stahl. Core just towards the forward pocket. Now back pocket as the dogs try to hack it out. Not that great, mind you. Jess Kennedy under all kinds of pressure. Elected to go with a hand pass. Close to the boundary line. Kept in by the dogs. But it is a grubber kick up the line. Trying to pick it up there is Caitlin. You better, you better, you bet. And the umpire says that's a free kick. And Betts will get the footy for the doggies. Half back flank. Long up the line. Through several sets of hands, and the umpire again says another infringement. Well, this is Kiwi, very different to the Essendon Collingwood game. It was a lot of ball ups. The umpire's red hot in the free kicks in this match. Yeah, they're not uh, letting anything play on and um, controlling the game a little bit, perhaps. <laughs> Monaghan decides to go inside 50 with the kick. Oh, is that one too high? Yes, it is. Umpire right in the spot and says, You may put your head back on your shoulders now and have a free kick. Yeah, they're just over ball ups. Their arms are tired. They're like, it's much easier to just call free kick. <laughs> <laughs> Davies goes to the switch. Knee Felton on very special comments. Butler being held. No, Butler dropping the football according to the umpire. McCure Chowd is pushed up the ground towards the half four. Got way too close to the player on the mark and kicked it into the player on the mark. Was looking for Stall and also the agency of Bailey. Stall went through. Only took out her own teammate. Tried to get a hurried hand pass. Umpire said too high. Free kick and she's w waving. Get to the goal square. Get to the goal square. Which means she'll probably pass it to someone. As Stall, as the footy, bingo, right on the money. <laughs> oldest trick in the book. And the umpire, well, everyone stopped there for a moment, which was strange. Maybe it was a fake lead there from Bailey. But nonetheless, the Tigers end up working it out okay. They switch it across to Jess Kennedy. And she'll have a shot on goal from about 35 out directly in front. But Kiwi, that was weird. The Tigers forward ran for it and Bailey, and then everyone stopped. Yeah, I, d I think the girl that led for it... Um Went under the ball, it went clearly over her head, and I think that's what shocked everyone. Was no, there was no backup option. <laughs> We're supposed to hit her or no one. Jess Kennedy, originally from the Bendigo Thunder, directly in front. Does she tie it up? No, it's off hands. It all reached her as a minor score. And Richmond's first score of the game, they move to one behind. The Western Bulldogs are one straight six here on RSN Carnival 2. With her thoughts, Nee Felton. Yeah, I think both teams looking a little bit unsure. Doesn't look like there's a lot of talk on the ground. I'm seeing a lot of um, 
Oh, Bulldogs have just turned it over as well. <laughs> yeah, McEwa <laughs> Chow taking that again. <laughs> she's looking damaging McEwa Chow, I've got to say that. Yeah, now that she's taking marks. Stall. <laughs> Ouch. Has now no, that meant to be. That was good. Yeah, she's it, working it, herself it, into the game. It was, I, that came off it, really mean. Yes, it was harsh. Milford. <laughs> Dog is taken away. <laughs> <laughs> now kicked it outside of 50. All complaints to Neef Felton. Courtesy yeah. of uh, is taken away here by Sarah Jolly for the Bulldogs. Really nothing on inside their forward 50 as the ball dribbles backwards. It sits up okay for and taking it in Kate Dempsey. Dempsey now releases Jackie Graham. Goes to McCua Chow. Another possession for her. A Keck Mature Chow trying to find Brad Canasano. Brad Canasano was underneath the football. Did she get a nudge? Yes, said the umpire, courtesy of McLeod. Where was the nudge in that? I don't know. She was behind. But the umpire said got a nudge. <laughs> anyway, there's the <laughs> kick by Egan. Now, Stall, dancing around left, dancing around right. Got on the right boot. Went towards the top of the goal square. And taking a mark 15 metres out, almost directly in front is going to be one Emily Paterno, formerly of the St Kilda Sharks. This one's a little bit closer in, so hopefully it won't drop short. Paterno creeps in. Oh, uh, did drop dear. Short. <laughs> no. Away to the right. You were correct on that element. You just <laughs> failed to mention about the accuracy. And that means the uh, Tigers, they move to now two behinds. And for... The Western Bulldogs, they are one straight six here on RSN Carnival 2 via WARFradio.com and Facebook.com forward slash WARFradio for the video. Stream the kickback and the play. Oh, they made an absolute mess of this. In comes Milford. Umpires blowing the whistle and said free kick to the doggies. That Kiwi, they just got out of jail on that. Yeah, they really did. I don't know what they were thinking switching it back so quickly and the girl yeah. wasn't ready. I think the thing was they weren't thinking. <laughs> as the ball was kicked long up the line, umpire said there was an infringement in the contest and the former Bulldog captain and Katie Brennan now goes for the switch. Works out okay. Spots up Brown Catasano. Brown Catasano with the footy. Inside the centre square, she kicks the football. For a drag! Came from behind, couldn't quite hang on to it. Got knocked away from her. And for the Tigers, they now have the opportunity to go in by Miller. Miller towards the half, towards the forward pocket, rather. Ball spilled out. Hurry little snap kick is defended. Right in the last line of defence. Frederick tried to put the hand in there. Doggy's coming out of defence, only as far as Phoebe Monaghan. He put a fist in there. Sarah Jolly weaved through traffic on the left. Jolly now went towards the halfback flank. Umpire said it's a free kick and it's going the way of Louise Bibby who'll clean up there for the doggies. Coach Kiwi. Yeah it's a, it's a real mess down here. Monaghan did great. I can see what she was doing trying to punch it over to Brennan and if that stuck would have been in a good spot but um, didn't quite get there. As they kick it up the line. Mark taken. I think that might have been Rebecca Miller getting underneath that. Miller. Ugh, that kick wasn't great. Found Louise Butler. Butler now working it wide, close towards the boundary line. Frank Catasano does well. The cavalry arrives, including Jackie Graham. Ball spilt out. And the umpire says it's all wrapped up. We'll call for a ball up. Of course, we spoke to Jackie Graham's wife and former and uh, fellow teammate, shall I say, and Jess Kennedy on our midweek show this week. You can download that podcast by going to Spotify and searching for Women's Australian Rules Football Radio. As the kick goes up the line towards the half forward flank. Getting on there is the player in Crundle. And she's seen over the boundary line and out of bounds. Right underneath the light tower. One straight six, the Bulldogs. Richmond two behinds with some thoughts. Here's Nate Felton. Yeah, after the Bulldogs kind of had most of the play in their favour at the start of the game, it's really been Richmond controlling. Um, and it's mostly coming out of the fact that Bulldogs kick just really struggled getting it out of the defensive 50 for a while there. Hannah Scott danced around, got on the right boot, now goes inside 50, looking for Ward. Oop, dropped it, then got back again. Nearly had the shorts pulled down there. It was Hannah McLaren. They had to work it sideways. Akua, uh, Akek Makua Chout chasing after it. One bounce and over the boundary line. This will be close because it was near the 50 metre arc, depending on what side of it, it, it happened. And it was on the other side, so it's a Bulldogs free kick. It's been ruled because of the last disposal. But the Tigers managed to clean it up through Monaghan, who got it to uh, Akek Makua Chout, who went up the line. Whoop, that was one too high. And a free kick going the way of Emma Gunn. Whoop, and a play gets dumped by Katie Brennan. 
Brennan dubbed Hannah Scott. Hannah Scott has a crack at Katie Brennan. Here's the fireworks. And guess what? A 50-metre penalty against Katie Brennan. And the crowd is giving it to their former captain. Uh, especially of all the players to uh, um, have a crack at Hannah Scott. I don't reckon that. As somebody who recently re-signed with the club, decided to stick around after there was kind of a bit... I was worried um, Scott was going to leave because there just wasn't any news about her for a little bit there. But, um, yeah, yeah, I just think, you know, it's a bit a poetic justice, maybe. Yeah, Sarah, Sarah Jolly's just run after Brennan and given her a whack as well. Ooh. So um, They're not happy about it. Ma <laughs> maybe just reminding their former captain of uh, you're no longer one of us now. <laughs> Might uh, as well. As in comes Hannah Scott from... 30 metres out, slight angle, it's away to the left, and it will register as a minor score. And that means the Bulldogs move on to 117, Richmond two behinds in our VFL Women's Match of the Day, part two of our double header. I was just thinking as well with Katie Brennan leaving, it leaves the perfect door open for uh, Isabella Grant to wear the number three at least. So There you go. Looking, you know, very optimistic for the future. Always look on the bright <laughs> side of life as the ball is now out. Oh, Brennan just put a player into the ground and McKaylee Award. They'll probably come for her again after that. And Wood gets up, says, I'll have the free kick. Thank you very much. And she kicks it inside 50. Went through several sets of hands. The umpire's hot on the whistle. Pointed to the Bulldogs way and then went, oops, wrong way. And then pointed towards the Tigers way. And says... Interested to, to know how many free kicks have been called. A lot. <laughs> Tamara <laughs> Smith. <laughs> many. <laughs> yes, that, that, that is my scientific finding. As Paterno now You've has it for the three Tigers. Three umpires in one half. Jess Kennedy now <laughs> going across and finding the player here. And Emma Gunn. Two guns today. One on either side. Emma Gunn. Ugh. Gun by name, not by nature. She's turned the football over to Lauren Spark. Sparky goes up the line, looking for Grace Egan, not knocked out of her hands. Ball on the deck, in comes Jess Kennedy. Can't quite pick it up. Sarah Jolly over the top of it, lost it, goes back again. Harassed by Kennedy. And everyone's jumping in there. The umpire says, I'll ask for the football back, please, and call for a ball up. In the shadows of the quarter time siren, five point lead to the Western Bulldogs. Katie Brennan has given away a 50 metre penalty after her and Hannah Scott exchanged some friendly words. Egan gives the hand pass out to one Katie Brennan. Brennan got a nudge, she got her kick away. Umpire said it was fair, you can play on. And the siren sounds to indicate quarter time here at VU Witten Oval in Footscray. No love lost between these two sides. We know on the men's side of the equation, at AFL level, there's a bit of a rivalry between the Tigers and the Bulldogs going back to the days of Liberatore and Matty Knights. And maybe something, Nee Felton, maybe something is bubbling away at women's level. Yeah, I think definitely having your captain ditch you, kind of, it, just, it, it hurts a lot, especially after she was kind of um, poster girl for, you know, real daughter of the West sort of thing. So it's... um. As a Bulldog supporter, like disappointing, not only is she a good player, adds a lot to a team, but having a captain and someone who you thought was kind of there since the beginning and, you know, to the end of her career is um, a bit upsetting. But, um, you know, that's, I think that's just the landscape of, um, AF, particularly AFOW, just because you have to leave if you want to get better opportunities in Richmond's big club um, with more sort of options, I guess, in terms of sponsorship is what, how I kind of saw it. So I don't begrudge her necessarily but I think at a very like primal football level I am very mad about it <laughs> and, 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 and mind you at, again talking about the primal football level it is technically the fault of the league because the league expanded so fast exactly. so early it hasn't allowed the opportunity like the men's game which the expansion took years but it was a case of you were allowed to build up a history behind your side and yeah, mind exactly. you it still didn't stop players would eventually leave of course the famous Ron Barassi move from the 60s and Melbourne to Carlton that made news back in the day and I think West Coast supporters might talk about Chris Judd moving to Carlton and all of that but um, I guess I think everyone's in shock by so many players moving around and again that's just through the speed of the league expanding yeah exactly and you're gonna have obviously like a team is gonna go after your best players um, to build their team around. And I think, yeah, I'm not crazy about the rapid expansion, but I am, I guess I'm glad that more people can get brought in to women's football that way because I know a lot of people who don't really follow it because their team isn't in it. And because, we're, like, we're talking about mm. that, like, primal football thing, you just can't. Yeah. A lot of people, for them, it's more about their team rather than the game. And so, mm. at least with more teams, we'll hopefully see uh, more people getting into women's football.
We'll pick up our thoughts on the first quarter right on the other side of this break. It's the Western Bulldogs 117 leading Richmond 2 behind here in our VFL Women's Match of the Day. Premiership coach Paul Roos talks teamwork, leadership and creating a winning culture. One of the smartest minds in football talks about his life and the lessons he's learned on the next RecLink Sporting Chance Night. If you're in sport or business, come and learn from one of the best. It's on Wednesday, August 14 at the Hoppers Club. Come and drive Hoppers Crossing. Tickets just 25 Five dollars, but bookings are a must. Call nine four one nine double six seven two and join Paul Roos. Recklink, including the unincluded. The end of financial year sales have begun at Brighton Mazda, and you don't want to miss it. Get incredible value across all new and demo Mazda, like huge discounts on run-out models, end of financial year bonuses, and drive-away deals across our range of SUVs, utes, sedans, and hatches. So don't miss a deal. Get in first and start your financial year with a brand new car from Brighton Mazda. SUV Central, where excellence costs no more. T's and C supply. LNCT 10963. Ho, ho, ho! Go, you good thing! It's Christmas in July at the Meadows. Exhilarating greyhound racing, a delicious Christmas buffet, and jumping castles for kids every Saturday night in July. Book now at meadows.org.au. Need a new car battery? RACB comes to you seven days a week. Book your installation online in just minutes, and they'll do the rest. To book, visit racb.com.au slash batteries. There's jumpers, hoodies, and tees for you at least. LeagueTees.com.au is your place for retro footy gear with designs created by local artists that you won't find anywhere else. Plus, their unique range of women's footy tees help raise funds for Indigenous literacy programs. Get online and start shopping today. LeagueTees.com.au or SN Carnival 2 is the V. It is the VFL Women's Match of the Day here on RSN Carnival 2 via WARFradio.com, Facebook.com forward slash WARF Radio, and of course the VFL app. And I should mention those that are watching online, including Western Bulldogs player for three games at VFL W level, now back in Arizona. Maybe, maybe a rookie listed player with the Bulldogs at the AFLW. Danny Marshall is watching online. Great to see Russ Cannum, a man about town. A man is always taking photos at the women's footy. And has got photos going back something like 10 years. Russ Cannum, great to see, have you watching online. Plus as well, Anita Fitzpatrick, Roma Clark, Susan Brinkman all watching online and enjoying the uh, contest, which has the Western Bulldogs up by five points. That's via our facebook.com forward slash WARF radio Facebook stream. And of course, online at RSN Carnival 2 and WARF radio.com. Coach Kiwi uh, with us. Kiwi, how did you see that first quarter play out? Look, I um, actually think both teams started quite messy, to be honest. Um, Richmond just looked disorganized in their back line and um, the balls that Bulldogs are sending in weren't quality at all. But um, they were able to do something with it. And in the end, they got the goal and they've got the points on the board from that. Um, and then they tend to um, shut off a little bit. And, and Richmond then got the ball into their forward line. And, and again, just messy and poor quality. There's a lot of drop marks and a lot of um, really you know, kicks that are just not hitting targets at all. At this level, you kind of expect it, especially with the number of AFLW players on the field. You expect a little bit better performance out there than what we're seeing. And the performance uh, from the Western Bulldogs at the moment, uh, they just seem to be all over the top, all running around uh, Richmond, who are struggling to work it up the line. They've only been, what, twice inside 50, and that was courtesy of the likes of Akuk Makua Chowd and Phoebe Monaghan creating something for them. Besides that, just the cut across the, the midway line by the Bulldogs to stop everything and run it back into their inside 50s. Taking a rough guess on numbers, I'd say it's something like a 12-2 to 2 advantage to the Bulldogs for inside 50s for that quarter. Yeah, I think Bulldogs definitely... Um, going into their forward 50 more often but it, yeah it's just really messy and it's there's no real kind of um I don't know you can't tell what structure they're trying to implement well we're underway now for the second term five point lead to the Western Bulldogs umpire comes in and asks for the football back and we'll call for a ball up once more good crowd in attendance here I'd probably say around about 350 400 people here have stuck around after the VFL men's game to watch as taken away here by Hannah Scott for the Bulldogs. Pumped it long towards their centre half forward position. Waiting back for it though off the bounce. Jackie Graham. Graham now puts it out. 
towards the wing. Monaghan receives on this occasion from Grace Campbell. Goes back inside, looking for Brennan. Taken away from her by Jolly. Whoops, Bulldogs get turned over here. And uh, umpire says that was a little unfair and that will be a free kick going towards the Doggies. Hannah Scott receives on this occasion from uh, Rudin, who now works it up the line. Dogs with a right boot kick towards the half-forward flank position through several sets of hands. Macalia Ward is lurking nearby. Wants to try and get involved. Trying to get her hands on the pill there. Lisa Davey. Bulldogs still scrapping away for it. 45 metres out from goal. Got knocked along the carpet. Picked up by Bailey Hunt. Then around on the left boots. Towards the forward pocket. Trying to run out of defence madly is Dempsey. Very close towards the boundary line at the halfback flank. Receiving now Miller. Miller pumps it long up the line. Doug Hawkins wing. One, two, three bounces. Ball stays in play. Sabrina Frederick has gone up the line. Called for it. Received it. Gave off the hand pass. Now the Tigers want to go to a kick. McEwa Chowder's run forward. She's got two to beat. McEwa Chowder's beaten both of them. Put it on the right boot. How does it look? It's away to the right. Would have been something special if she got it, but will register as a minor score. Richmond three behinds. The Bulldogs one one seven. Here's Nate Felton. Yeah, that was a beautiful play from Akua Shot. I think, um, yeah, had the ball bent a little bit more. Maybe if it was uh, more windy as it is traditionally at Witten Oval, she would have gone that in. Ball is now at the half back for the doggies. Sabrina Frederick getting involved again. And we'll call for another ball up. And I guess it just shows the importance of McCure Chouch running there for the Tigers, uh, Kiwi, that we don't see enough in women's football. Those that start in the half-back line that are willing to push up the ground, bust a gut to get to half forward to create that extra option. Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, I think, you know, if you looked at her stats already, she's covered a lot of ground because she has been quite prolific in both um, 50 um, for either forward or defensive lines. They've got a lot of possessions. Uh, unlucky she got missed that goal, really. After a ball up, we saw possession of Bailey, who got it to gun inside 50 for the Tigers. It's now bounced outside of their 50. McEwen Chout's going to receive it again. A kick, McEwen Chout pulls the kick this time. Is it just the required distance? According to the umpire, it is. And a mark is taken for the Doggies. 35 metres out, slight angle. Having a shot at goal is Laura Bailey. Recruited originally out of the St Kilda Sharks. Gives it off to Katie Brennan, who was away to the right. Minus score, four behinds the Tigers, the Bulldogs 1-1-7. We have gone three minutes in the second quarter. Match analyst, Nia Felton. Yeah, um, Bulldogs pretty lucky to have those two misses from Richmond. Otherwise, I think they'd be starting to fall out of the game a little bit. Hopefully they can get it out of their defensive 50 now and not struggle so much like they did in the first quarter. Ball in the back pocket here for the Doggies, and now they decide to go long up the line. Oh, Hannah Scott waited for it out the back. Very sneaky, then went with the right boot up the line. But backing back underneath it here is Tamara Smith. And the umpire said no in the back, and then a Bulldogs player gets down behind play as well. Jeez, it's a bit willing out there at the moment. So a free kick for the Dogs out of all of that mess. And it's taken away by Sarah Jolly. She decides to go towards the half-forward flank. Ball got knocked away. McCarty Award took a body count. Now trying to run all the football. Danuccio worked it wide. Here's an opportunity for the Dogs on the left boot. It looks pretty good! And it is! Emma Mackey, thank you very much. That was a perfect kick to get over the defender as well. Coach and Kiwi. That is why you have a left foot as well exactly. as a right foot in the game. I don't know if she's left footed or right footed, but, um, you what? know, she had no time to get that onto her right foot, had to put on her left and quality ball in, which um, at the other end, KB did the right um, move to get in for the hands, but had to just t twist her hips a little bit to put onto her preferred right foot and um, didn't get the right angle to put it through. So, you know, Bulldogs are showing her. Put on the other side of the body, kick a goal. Wow. Emma Mackey, against really the runner flow, wasn't it, for the Bulldogs? Because the yeah, Tigers definitely. had it dominate for the first four minutes of the quarter. The umpire's giving a warning for the structure not being set up correctly against the Dogs. I don't know. Who can Curious start where it. with a 6-6-6? Six, six, six. Like six are there. I mean, my maths isn't great, but I feel like I can get to see. <laughs> Everyone's looking around going, everything looks okay. We're not quite sure what he's on about. Nobody moved. As I said uh, during the earlier game, the 666 represents the amount of figures on an AFL executive salary. As the, the ball is now taken away here by the Tigers. Dance of the devil. <laughs> Goes up the line towards the centre wing position. Now coming in for it is Danuccio. 
And she's over the top of the football. Umpires and blowing the whistle, still allowing it to go on. Now he holds up play and says it's a free kick going the way of Jackie Graham for the Tigers on the Doug Hawkins wing. Now gets on the right boot, comes in board to Grace Egan for the Tigers. Runs around, got the fluoro boot. You've got to be good if you're wearing the fluoro boot. Sabrina Frederick flies maybe a little too early. Went over her head. Widing out the back to try and clean it up. Leofi with the football for the Doggies. Does okay. Gets on the right. Whoop, just picking it off there is Cody Jacks. Jack is back and heads the hand pass across to Egan, who's got to dance around. Oh, she's in all kinds of trouble. Had to get rid of the hand pass. Going in there, Cody Jacks to create the pressure. Emma Mackey's got to dance around two, then gets on the left boot. Yes, she has that left and goes up the line. Dyke send it back. Monaghan now trying to find Brad Catasano. Gets immediately caught. They jump all over her. And the umpire says, I'll ask for the footy back, please, and we'll call for a ball up. 2-1-13 leads four behind. Coach Kiwi. Yeah, um, I don't know if the tempers are sort of... Um been brought back down but at the quarter time break the umpires had a really big chat to Richmond's captain so they're not happy with um, perhaps how some of the contact has been as now taken away here by Hunt who got the hand pass away intercepted momentarily wanting to jump in there Annabelle Scott and we'll call for a ball up once more between centre and centre half forward for the doggies so we'll reset play perfect Saturday, winter's day here in Melbourne. Egan, bumped off it by Hannah Scott, who slapped it on the ground while being on the ground. Going to take it, Hannah McLaren. Umpire comes in and will call for a ball up. Also impressions from the Felton. Yeah, I think um, really even game so far, which is good. It'd be good if, I think, I've said this a lot this season, if teams could just spread that little bit more, um, I think it would, I mean, it's obviously going to open the game up um, and have a few more options. Once again, we're going to call for another stoppage. And you were mentioning earlier that uh, Emma Gunn was originally out of Melbourne Uni. Yeah, so um, I just wanted to point out that I used to train with her until she, <laughs> until people realised she was good and they moved her up to she the... She helped um, her become good. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, it could have been me, maybe. If I was a little bit more coordinated. But, um, <laughs> yeah, it did really well and then tried out at one... I think it was Richmond's first um, trial day and immediately got picked up and has been a really, um, I think, important part. She's super fast. Um, Emma Gunn and yeah trains really hard works really hard so I'm not surprised she's um, a regular VFLW player now Doggies on the left straight inside 50 towards the dangerous hotspot 30 out will be cleaned up though by the Tigers and they'll move it towards the direction of uh, Laura Bailey who had all kinds of trouble from behind Bailey goes to ground, waiting for a Jackie Graham to come out. Stacks and on. Yeah, it was almost twister style. It's like, everyone jump on top. It's like, geez, I would have thought maybe you're in the back, maybe? Yeah, some, <laughs> When you're jumping thing. like that. <laughs> I haven't seen that since high school. Yeah. As the ball is thrown up in the air, and unfortunately, I'd be one of those on the bottom of the pack when they <laughs> jumped on me. As McMahon goes in there, so is Gabrielle Seymour, and we'll call for a ball up. Seymour has been the 23rd player a number of times for Richmond this year. Young ruck, and has been performing very, very well. Oh, I used to go to school with her, I just realised. Well, there's another. Yeah, her dad was my sister's maths teacher, too. Oh, okay. <laughs> Pretty sure if that's her. Well, we've got the six degrees of Kevin Bacon. We're going to have the six degrees yeah. of Neve Felton. Yeah. You're connected to everyone in the league. As the hand pass coming away, receiving it now is uh, the player in Bailey Hunt. But the kick was off target. Coming away, though. She's checking on that. Dempsey now moves out towards the uh, Doug Hawkins wing position. Tigers want to move up the line. Katie Brennan goes flying through the air. Gets a nudge, according to the umpire. It's a free oh, kick. Did you think milk back a little kiwi? I well, heard it doubtful. No, uh -huh. she, she did go flying, but the girl had her arms down. She used her body and just really pushed yep, KB off, off balance. Uh, it is the Gabby Seymour I went to school with, because I know it was Gabby, you not know, Gabrielle, so I didn't pick it up. Uh, it's going through, and there is uh, uh, Branca Asano, who delivers it beautifully inside 50, and taking a mark is Laura Bailey, and she'll be having a shot on goal from about 45 metres out, slight angle, and just a moment time earlier, Kiwi, again, we are calling her in the half-back line. You spotted something? Yeah, look, Phoebe Monaghan's in the pocket. And that's where she goes! <laughs> Being there, she could have had two cups of tea by the time <laughs> the ball kick got kicked in. Well, since, of course, you're a Sydney legend yourself, uh, Elisa Kiwi Ray, but talk about uh, Phoebe Monaghan's time at AFL Sydney. Oh, look, I've seen her um, spend hours upon hours kicking at goal. Um, she doesn't get many in games. Could just usually she's playing off the back line. Um, but, yeah, I'd put, I'd put a cup of coffee on this. That's about it. 
Phoebe Monaghan has just cost Kiwi a cup of coffee <laughs> there you go. across See, the well, face and a minus <laughs> score here on RSN Carnival 2, WARFradio.com and Facebook.com forward slash WARF Radio. The score indicates Richmond 5 behinds the Bulldogs 2 1 13. Very close to the boundary line. It was either going to be out of bounds on a full or a mark to KB. It was on the full, but KB will take the kick. KB. Now goes on the right, it's going in the direction of Frederick. <laughs> Two by to the Jerry, pulls it in. Big cheer from the Tiger Faithful, and she'll be lining up for goal from 35 metres out directly in front. Yeah, exactly sort of what Richmond are looking for, and hopefully um, for them can recreate many times over in the coming years. Put a few coffees on this. Yeah, <laughs> I reckon, I reckon yeah, that's a safe. I'll put a coffee scroll on there as well as the <laughs> coffees. Frederick, <laughs> bang! Tigers oh, first, oh. her first goal at Tigerland. And it reduces the margin to two points. Richmond 1-5-11, the Western Bulldogs 2-1-13. Coach Kiwi. Yeah, look, um, the crowd's gone wild. I think she's brought everyone over from um, her little town of um, Hampton in England. But, um, <laughs> um, you know, they're absolutely stoked. And she worked hard to get that mark. You know, the first time she went up, she got bodied out a little bit and regained her balance and then got up again and still managed to hold the mark. So, uh, well done. Well done, Sabs. And... Coming She's off come off for a rest now and celebrate, and I don't know if they've got special coffee on the sideline for her. That, that, that's <laughs> a loud cheer from the Tiger supporters. That's out cheering the Bulldog supporters on their home deck. Just a little more spice to the rivalry. Yeah. Uh, you know, Bulldogs are... Got, they've got three Bulldogs games on today, so people got to get... Oh. I think Sarah Bird is it presenting it somewhere or something. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. usually gets the crowd going. Yeah, I was going to say, I haven't seen it yet. Taking a mark, Emily Paterno here for Richmond after that centre bouncing clearance. Paterno off the back of the defensive centre now goes up the line looking for Egan to run onto the football. Egan keeps the football in front of herself, still going. Wanted to receive the hand pass on Laura Bailey, couldn't control it. Bailey had to go back again. Turns around on the right boot looking for Egan who ran further skill. Just a little too much juice on the kick. Went overhead, bounced out of play. Now, here's a question. Did it touch the fingertips or it didn't? Because if it touched the fingertips, then you could throw it in. If it didn't... It's a last disposal rule. According to the boundary umpire, touch the fingertips. Yeah, she should have pulled it in. Go get your arms, but, you know, she didn't work. As we wait, <laughs> the ball will be thrown back into play. Who remembers the claw and all of that from, go from Inspector Gadget? <laughs> As coming your age. <laughs> yeah, I am. And the grey hair as well. <laughs> Brad Catasano now goes long towards the pocket. Came off hands trying to find the direction of Imogene Milford. And That's why I stay blonde. Front. Covers the greys easier. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. 18 degrees outside in Melbourne. Seven minutes remaining in the second term. Beautiful night at Witten Oval. And we've got the Bulldogs leading the Tigers by two points. Is it thrown back into play? Doing the racking of that occasion, Milford brought it straight to ground, asking for it and receiving Bailey Hunt. Oh, she's got trouble from Egan. Got it back again. Stepped over the boundary line according to our vision. Boundary on pass it. Oh, I didn't see it. It was blindsided. The kick around the corner by the Tigers. Put it in the dangerous hotspot. 30 metres out as it bounced on the ground. Hunt had to try and pick Pardon me. Hannah Scott had to pick it up. Quickly kicked it in the direction of Laura Jolly, who spent out of trouble. Jolly, great moves. Dance floor style moves. Got it across to Bailey Hunt. Went with a hand pass over the top. Getting close towards the boundary line. Kennedy chasing after it. Also going with her was Gavilis. And the ball is over and out. Today's match analyst and former schoolmate of Gab Seymour is Nee Felton. Yeah, well, um, Gabby Seymour about to take the ruck. She was a gun volleyballer and bass clarinet player. So she's got the height and she's also got the pipes. So it's all good. Bass clarinet. It's yep. not something I'd ever think I'd hear in a commentary call of a game of football yeah. but you learn something new every day yeah she'll have great aerobic capacity i'm assuming from that uh, as it's taken away by by uh, frederick i don't know where to go from there the ball is now in towards the <laughs> center wing and we've got everyone jumping over the top of the football going in there is colwell now the dogs take it away they keep towards the center ah. half forward position oh louise bibby was juggling it lost it back onto mcleod who had mckewich out all over her ball hit the ground and guess what stacks in the middle again and will call for another ball up it's just those little things. If she'd been able to take that mark, would have given time to the Bulldogs mm. players to be able to run down, set something up, but instead she gives a hospital hand pass off and we have another ball up. And uh, going up on the ruck on that occasion, Celine Moody, but the Tigers take it away. Looking for Frederick, went through her hands. Now the hand pass to Frederick. Thought about blazing away for home. Decided to pull the kick instead. Wants to try and find Imogene Milford. She's going in a one-on-one. -on -one. Sees the safety of the boundary line. It will go over and out. And we'll have a throw in. She had on her hammer, Ashley Gunn. 
I'm not sure what Milford was doing. She started to lead into the space, and that's where Sabs kicked the ball, And but Milford had stopped by the time the ball came off the boot. So. Well, was Milford thinking it was meant to be a dummy run for Sabs to go for the goal square, and then realised, oops, she's passing it to me. Perhaps, I wasn't expecting yeah. it. I thought it was meant to be the dummy. There, uh, there is a fair bit around where they don't seem to know what their teammates are doing. Yeah. Well, to be fair, it's Frederick's first game anyway, so you're getting used well, to yeah, your teammates. Not just not yeah. just her, just a whole lot of them, especially around the midfield kind of area. They don't know if they're going long or they're going short. As the kick, now looking in the Frederick direction, dropped it, got it back again, went for the snap. Sabrina Frederick is right across the face, but guess who? Katie Brennan in the forward pocket. Brennan comes back, looking for Taylor Stahl. Had a teammate sliding through for support, and the umpire says, too high, too high free kick. And it'll be going the way of the Tigers. The Bulldogs crowd, not happy to say the least. Well, if there was a few more Bulldogs players around the contest, I dare say there wouldn't have been a free kick. But there was about three Richmond players there, and I feel like they deserve at least to have this forward entry just because there was, there was a lot of holes in the Bulldogs' defence at the moment. Laura Bailey is 30 metres out, slight angle, to put the Tigers in front. Stabs at it. It's low. It's wobbly. It hits the woodwork. 1-6-12 Richmond. The Bulldogs 2-1-13 here on RSN Carnival 2. Here's some thoughts from Coach Kiwi. Yeah, I found where the Bulldogs uh, supporters are. There's four of them over this side. Oh. <laughs> but they're very vocal for um, after uh, that free kick. <laughs> I think there's more than four. Just quickly. Oh, turnover. Monaghan comes in and kicks an easy point. So, to Crowd away to the realize, right, yeah. they haven't realised yet, they'll wake up in a moment and go, oh, she missed from there. Yeah, she missed from there. And 2-1-13 or 1-7-13, very close towards the boundary line, that kick. As the Bulldogs have kicked it back in the play, hard back flank, they go up the line. Was looking, almost to be an intercept by Graham, run down <laughs> here, the player in Gavilis. And a free kick going the way of the Tigers. That's, yeah, he didn't blow the whistle until he heard the crowd. That is not happy with that. Campbell, Monaghan, McLeod from behind, over the shoulder. Wow. I can tell you there's more than four <laughs> Bulldog supporters here, Kiwi, by the way, if you want to. Oh, sorry, I meant, I meant the four that were down. <laughs> oh. The four that are down that side by themselves are really noisy. Phoebe Monaghan now not goes easy. towards the hot spot. Oh, waiting out the back door, Laura Bailey. It was like, thank you very much. It went over the pack of three, and then she was just waiting there by standing, went, oh, ball's coming my way. And uh, swallowed it up nice and easily. So, Laura Bailey, for a chance to put Richmond in front, any score will put Richmond in front. It's 2 one to one seven thirteen at the moment. Bailey, it's an ordinary kick. She heard you. Any score, they're in front now. She, yeah, she's one she was chilling. eight fourteen to two one thirteen. With an explanation on that, Nee Felton. Yep, she was Laura Bailey was chilling. That's she what was I. <laughs> she was like, yeah, well, I can put us in front. Doesn't matter. It's fine. Um, but I think she's played a. In, oh, seriously, I think she's played a good game. I think it helps um, having players like uh, Frederick and Brennan in the front line to take those better defenders, and it's uh, she's doing a really good job and putting her case forward. I think as an important kind of third tool in the forward line. Cloud at half back, cleaned things up. It went only as far as Jackie Graham. Graham now on the right boot. Came in board, but an easy mark here for the doggies. McMahon cleaning up. McMahon works it wide towards the Doug Hawkins wing. McCure Chow brought it to ground. Going in to pick it up, Annabelle Scott. Ball was hatched out. Oop, how without it, maybe Sarah Jolly. No, dropping the football corner, the umpire. Advantage paid. We can't pass away. Ball caught the crowd, picking up off the ground. Katie Brennan gives away the hand pass. Nearly running into trouble is McLaren. She found further trouble, and all of a sudden, it'll be another ball up. One point lead to Richmond as we get near half time. It's pretty willing. It's willing at VFLW level. What's it going to be like at AFLW level when these two sides meet in, say, six to seven months' time? Whoop, Stall just caught one in the back then. Unlucky from Hannah Scott. Stall. Went long in the Frederick direction. Oh, spoiled by her own teammate who had the front spot in Milford there who had to get out of the road and didn't hear her coming. And the siren sounds for half time here at VU Witten Oval in West Footscray. It's the Western Bulldogs 2 1 13 trailing Richmond 1 8 14. Dare I say, a tale of two quarters. Bulldogs with all the domination in the first quarter. 
All the inside 50s essentially in this quarter going to the Tigers. Yeah, definitely. I think it really flipped um, in how which which team was kind of on top at the time. And I think Bulldogs are lucky there um, that there was a few misses from Richmond and maybe a few spoils. I think there's been, I kind of touched on it earlier, like there's a lack of talk. And we've seen a lot of just then um, Traub having her ball spoiled by a teammate. There's been a couple of things where there's just been two players going up, no one waiting out the back. Um, and I think whichever team sorts that kind of finds their groove first in this next quarter is going to be um and then they can convert that to the scoreboard i think um they'll be the team that comes away with the four points it's always a bad saturday night when you can't find your groove coach mm. kiwi um for the bulldogs uh, is it a case of shell shock what, what, what how do you describe their second quarter where they just didn't get going um, I always have my groove, just so you know. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think uh, that quarter, you you saw that the Richmond started to um, just lower their eyes and hit up each other a little bit better and looked a bit more organised when they took the ball forward. And probably for the Bulldogs, still not quite organised in that regard. And, um, you know, and definitely when they get possession, they've had enough possession, they're just not using it efficiently and they're not hitting their targets enough and you know perhaps some of them are not sort of getting to know each other or talking enough on the field either because it's not the crowd noise that I don't know what it is but you know there's a couple of times that one's gone in close of a handball but then the players chipped it over the top to her outside shoulder instead so there's definitely some communication challenges going on between them and um, you know and probably by now especially Bulldogs should know each other a bit better they've been together long enough absolutely um Considering they've thrown a few players around, like I'm seeing McMahon more in the back line, which um, normally should be the player that'd be taking the ruck, but they're allowing Moody to take the the clear bulk of the ruck work today. Yeah, I think uh, they've kind of gone with that combination of Moody and Rennie um, instead of using uh, the other rucks. And I think I think because that, but that's the thing. It's like it should be working a little bit better because it is. Um, I guess they've used it in the past. Um, so I'm unsure as, yeah, it's that sort of lack of real, um, oh, just showing us the Carlton NT Thunderscore. Which yeah, I know early in the year, like Paul was um, really keen to develop Moody as a ruck mm -hmm. and, um, and make use of her through the game. So um, maybe they just continue on that development that he put in place early in, in, the, pre in the piece to bring him to AFLW level. Just before I go, that a Carlton NT Thunderscore and just... Quickly, as we mentioned here at half time, um, we know the Bulldogs actually now looking for an AFLW coach. I'm quite surprised, unlike Collingwood, for example, where there was a bit of noise around who was going to be the Collingwood coach and the year before who was going to be the Carlton coach. It's been very, very quiet from out of the Bulldogs. Normally there'd be a leak by now or a handful of names thrown up about who would be taking charge of the Bulldogs for 2020. There's just been nothing reported anywhere. Yeah, I think it's uh, particularly for AFLW when there's less clubs, so it's not like the Bulldogs are like a small club um, in terms of the media landscape. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'd like to hear something soon. Just of, you just, know, my just own... checking my missed calls. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Could you? <laughs> um, do you want to make some now? But um, yeah, I think. Uh, I mean, we obviously like there's obvious candidates like Beck Goddard, who's still um, without a. Um, head coach role so I'd be I'd be interested to hear if um, they've started interviewing or whether because it's time to crack on it would be good to have um, the AFLW coach at least watch it come and watch yeah. and help with the VFLW um, so yeah very interesting Nicole Gray is one other name being yep. mentioned, but she says she likes the warmer climate, so we'll, we'll see that. Her. And again, a name I keep throwing up, but nobody else throws up, is Penny Kula reed because, you know, at the moment, you know, minor premiers last year, sitting on top of the table again as we currently speak, so there's another name to throw. And then, of course, uh, Patrick Kill, of course, the reigning VFLW premiership coach with the Hawthorns win last year. But around the grounds at the moment, half time up there in Darwin, NT Thunder 2 3 15, trailing Carlton 4 4 28. Yeah, interesting, especially after last week's um, result against Williamstown. Is What do you think, I guess, with NT Thunder? Is it just a mid-season blue sort of thing? Yeah, it, it, it always depends who's in and out of their side, particularly when it comes to the Adelaide-based players. Yeah, that's true. And it's who's resting and who's available. Because I think I, think I last saw on Instagram, um, Ebony Marinoff was somewhere in Europe at some stage, yeah, like, beautiful. you know, a bunch of players. Uh, nice. So, you know, a bunch of them are scattered all. I mean, I saw Katie... Um, Okay, uh, Catherine Smith, I think, is now over in London, I think, because previously, uh, all of last week, she was over in San Francisco training with the Iron Mans, then trained with the New York Magpies just this week gone. So, Yeah, I think um, part of the deal with NT Thunder is that when they're up that way, they have to use 
uh, Darwin play based players. Okay. Yeah. So um, potentially that's what they're doing today, and perhaps mm. they're not quite at the level that you know the regular Adelaide Crow players are. Mm. Uh, used to being it, but um, but you know it's part of the development. This is you know what they're in there for is to come up to this level of football and um, potentially be drafted in the future. So um, who knows? They might come back. The other yeah. games today, they've had some teams come back after big leads. So anything's possible. We'll take this opportunity to take a break here on uh, RSN Carnival Two W A R F Radio dot com. Facebook forward slash W A R F Radio and the V F L app. At the moment. It's the Western Bulldogs 2 1 13, trailing by a point. Richmond a 1 4, a 1 8 14. RSN Carnival 2. The Breakfast Club. Taylor Jure joins us from the Dogs. You play with some very, very good players at Hawthorne. Where does yeah. Marcus Bondampelli now sit? Sam Mitchell is probably one of the best I've played with, and I still think that. But I think Bond's just got this snack just to do what. No one else can do. Not often do you think in game how good someone's going. And I was definitely sitting back in the back. Oh, gee, I'm glad he's on our team. Rodney Ed, the goalie to me doesn't do enough. I know what he does is miraculous at times, but he's got to be doing more. He is a disappointment in many ways. Alex Carey. To play another good game against New Zealand. Obviously, winning helps, and that's the best place I've ever played, and it's really special. So, to look up, I knew where the family was sitting, so that was pretty special. But again, hopefully, we're back there in a couple of weeks' time. Max gone. Well, we'll get straight to it. How's the Obviously, for it to be that big, it has to be something, and I've watched the video of it as well, and it did look pretty grim. But I think everyone around the club saying that it should be something that I can, if I get the swelling down, back in the week of training and hopefully play Sunday. Taylor Adams is in the studio with us. It'll take some convincing to get me over the line next week. Obviously, the trouble to Perth doesn't help, but that's sort of my ultimate goal. And then if not, I'll definitely play against the Giants. Time to talk to some Melbourne Storm now. Shandor Earl. There was that ban for a period of time through Asada. We can't turn back the clock, of course, but what advice would you kind of give yourself through that time? I look back at a 22-year-old version of myself. Look, I'd like to not put myself in that position, although I... I'm able to say you know, everything that happened to me shaped me as the person I am today. Still five years out of your career is something I would like to have back. My hindsight's a very wonderful thing. The inner sanctum this morning is navy blue. Sam Doherty. Have you spoken with Brendan Bolton over the last couple of weeks? Wish me all the best again on the phone. I'd be naive to think that he's just gun rosy and he's left footy and he's going unbelievably well. And I basically called him just to say thank you for everything that he's done for the footy club. I know that this isn't the best part of your life and the best event that you've had to go through, but from the bottom of my heart, I just want to say thank Thank you for all you've done for us to set us on the path we're on. The Breakfast Club, 6 till 8.30 weekdays on RSN 927. Would you like a life by the beach? Make the sea change to Port Arlington Village. Just 200 metres from the water, just 400 metres from the golf club. It's quality beach living for the over 55s. Living in your own new home in the Port Arlington Township with a clubhouse, pool, gym and more. The best of the Bellarine right at your feet and Geelong just 30 minutes away. Don't leave it too late. Inspect the new homes now and see where beach life begins. See portarlingtonvillage.com.au Hi, I'm Lane Beachley. Cartridges for Planet Art just had its biggest year ever. On average, 13,500 printer cartridges were collected every working day. And they were all turned into useful things like pens, garden beds, even road surfaces. So thanks to everyone who recycled from home, work or school. To make the coming year even bigger, check out cartridges.planetart.org. The smell of baking. Routley's Bakery is so good. Why not grab a Routley slice to go with your coffee? Make it a classic apple slice, a bee sting, or a vanilla slice. That's absolute custard heaven. You can make a move on a muffin or go all the way and bite into a wicked Nutella donut. Routley's Bakery is right across Geelong as well as Eltona, Newport, Williamstown, and Ascot Vale. Fancy a Routley's pie? Of course you do. You're okay. Just did it because he likes you. Don't try like a girl, mate. Violence against women starts with disrespect. The excuses we make allow it to grow. Violence against women. Let's stop it at the start. There's jumpers, hoodies and tees for you at leaguetees.com.au 
www.tees.com.au is your place for retro footy gear with designs created by local artists that you won't find anywhere else. Plus, their unique range of women's footy tees help raise funds for Indigenous literacy programs. Get online and start shopping today. Footytees.com.au RSN Carnival 2. It's women's RC rules are doing what they love. The fans are tough, don't mess with them because they can get rough. Are you ready for the challenge? Are you ready for the match? It's the call of the game. It's the VFL Women's Match of the Day. On RSN Carnival. It's the From VU Witten Oval in West Footscray. This is the VFR Women's Match of the Day as the sun starts to set over Melbourne and the Western Bulldogs trail by one point on their home turf. 2 1 13, trailing Richmond 1 8 14, with the smell of hot pies uh, going through the air, courtesy of one commentator enjoying it. I won't. I won't hark on about it because I grabbed one from 7-Eleven on the way in here to the ground at VU Witten Oval in Footscray. Just a reminder about two games uh, we've got coming up. We've got no matches on tomorrow, uh, no broadcast tomorrow, simply because there is no VFL women's game scheduled for play. Uh, we will be on air next Saturday uh, from 11 a.m. Uh, for sorry, from 12 p.m. Pardon me for a 1 p.m. bounce. We will be doing uh, Essendon versus the GWS Giants, a VFLW Invitational match out there at Witten Hill, uh, Witten, Witten, Windy Hill. Hang on. Thank you. Um, uh, yes, Kiwi? I think they're at the hangar. Are they, are they going to change it to the hangar? I think they're at the hangar. Because according to what we've got, we've got it as Windy Hill. Yeah, the girls today were talking about playing at the hangar next week. Okay, so that means I have to call up the Essen Football Club during the week going, please tell me what ground <laughs> you're playing. I don't want to show up at the wrong ground. I wonder if they've told Giants too. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that. Oh, now now I know why, why it makes sense because therefore they wouldn't even have to get a bus. They could almost walk as well. from the airport straight <laughs> to the hangar. So I wouldn't be surprised if they pull that to save 900 bucks or whatever it is on a coach. Um, and, and that is a bus coach, not a coach coach. Um, Save on that. Yeah, and then, and then of course, uh, on Sunday, uh, we'll be at Preston City Oval to bring the Darabin Falcons versus the NT Thunder. And if Carlton knock off the Thunder, tell you what, Darabin might be thinking to us to themselves, you know what, may, maybe we're a sniff. They should anyway. They um, they need the points. But, you know, they've got some good players that played last year in the Darabin squad that, um, you know, just pull them all together and, and play you a good footy that you can play and, um, you know, get back in the winning winning circle. It's, you know, it's part of their culture, I think, to be in the in the winning circle at Falcons. So, um, you know, there's probably a few there that don't really know their way around at the moment. Yeah, being bottom of the table, as everyone <laughs> says, Darabin, bottom of the table. A, some are perplexed. And there might be some former Darabin opponents that might be just smiling slightly, just going, well, it's been a while. Uh, I've seen a couple. There's, yeah, there's yeah. a few cheering. It's, yeah. it's like, wow, the rivalry still is... Uh, it, it's, it's like uh, Darabin are essentially the Port Adelaide or Collingwood of an old sample or an old VFL, as in you love them or you hate them. There's no, there's no uh, grey area. Yes, I've, I've learned that um, in my short time in Melbourne is... Uh, <laughs> come across exactly that either the ones that really like them or really um don't and, and the ones that are it, have been in there like you know your likes of um darcy vesio and um and even now i guess mel hickey and they, they still come back to the club and they still watch you know darcy's at almost every junior game in the weekends every under 18s and you know, that's pretty hard to to get club people to do it let alone someone who's now a former club person but to come back and i think it just sort of shows you something about the culture of the of the Falcons as well. It runs deep in their veins. Well, that's because uh, future Prime Minister of Australia, Darcy Vessio, is awesome. <laughs> as, uh, she is indeed. She uh, is. As uh, Richmond and the Bulldogs are now both back out on the ground. The lights are starting to come on here at Widden Oval. The crowd is sticking around. The temperature is slightly cooling off a bit. It says 18, on the uh, 18 degrees on the screen. I reckon it's probably more about 14. I reckon it's just starting to dip a little bit here. I reckon that thermometer is up there in the sunshine. <laughs> yeah, and that's and yeah, exactly. And the sun's just beaming on it nicely and giving us a false reading. According to the weather app I've got here, it reckons seventeen degrees. 
I might buy that more than 18. As you can hear the Bulldog supporters going, on the dogs. They want to get up and about. Richmond, I'm actually looking through the crowd. I reckon I can count maybe about 75, I reckon, Richmond supporters out of the crowd of around 300 odd. So they're yeah. good numbers from the Tigers. Yeah, there's, I'd say there's a bit more Richmond than there is uh, Bulldogs colours sitting around. So we're just about ready to get underway here for the third quarter on RSN Carnival 2, WARFradio.com, on the VFL app and our Facebook stream on facebook.com forward slash WARF Radio. Hello to Tess, who's listening up there in North Queensland at the moment. She's probably warm. <laughs> yes, yes. You just have to say two words, North Queensland, and all of a sudden everyone thinks warm. As um, the umpire... Double checks that everyone is in position, 666 and all lined up and all of that jazz. And we are underway for the third term here on our Swiss Wellness VFL Women's Match of the Day. McMahon has been moved into the rack. She's going up against Gabrielle Seymour. She went to chase up her own footy then, went to try and get a hand pass. Couldn't quite get it out. Now take it away, Monaghan, off the side of the boot, looking for Taylor Stahl, who's pushed further up the ground. Stahl takes a mark. Taylor Stahl, she is about 65 metres out from home, decides to pull the kick to Brennan. Who takes a mark, and she marks inside 50, but will be kicking from outside 50. She goes for the spearing kick, the old one too, and finds Taylor Stall, who just snuck around, did a hook turn, and then Kiwi just dropped into the hole 35 out. Yeah, look, that was really good play from KB. I'm surprised she didn't go back and um, have a shot at goal, because it's in her own. She's got a yes. very big shot at goal, and she'd know this over a little bit better than most. But, um, yeah, nice teamwork. It was like earlier today's call when James Trebinoff says he hadn't seen a woman kick it from outside 50 ago. You've not met Sarah Perkins. <laughs> I've seen her do a, spa, uh, do a torpedo from 70. As in goes Stahl. Frederick had one, two bites of cherry. Couldn't pull it in. And uh, almost stacks in the pill now. Ball is, won't quite squeeze out. Still in the forward pocket. Lalofi had it. Whoa, dropped the cold. Umpire says holding the football. Free kick to Richmond. And on KB's kicking, I've seen a kick it from about 55 to 60 out with the breeze and go well and truly past the goals. I've seen a 16-year-old Taylor Harris kick 70 metres. Back then I thought, wow, this kid's special and not Victorian. How about <laughs> that? And uh, she has continued to play like that. The former mugger Emma Gunn has the footy. She's in the forward pocket. Kicks to the right-hand side. Nee Felton taught her all she knows. And that might have scored. <laughs> you agree? Nee, we're not, yeah, maybe. I we're not know. count that, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, taught her much. all she knows about missing shots. <laughs> and that moves them on to 1-9-15. Here on our VFL Women's Match of the Day. Two minutes gone in this third term. Getting cool, even Kiwi's gone for the jacket as Lalofi brings the ball back into play. Whoop, oh, whoop, play down behind play, Brennan. Oh, geez, wonder what happened here. He's got a uh, whack on the back of the head then. Somebody said, uh, we don't like you leaving the doggies, and here's a reminder. Uh, and out to Monaghan, out to Brennan. Brennan in the pocket on the left, pulls the kick, looking for Taylor Stall. Three in front of her, pull it down. Stall oh. with a sliding kick! And she's got Just it for the it. Tigers! Yeah, that was a beautiful little kick in from um, Katie Brennan. Very smart football. And again, see, use of your left side of your body. Uh, very important. She was there on the boundary and uh, centered the ball into the square. And there you go. Big score. But um, yeah, I, don't, I missed who you hit, um, hit uh, KB on the back of the head. But I'm it, sure she'll come for some attention a bit later. It was clearly off the ball. And uh, one got a feeling there may be payback later on. But uh, safe to say there is absolutely no love lost between the pool dogs players and katie brennan it's been brutal out there yeah boy oh boy it's a camera angle from this side i don't know <laughs> I, I i no comment no comment is all i'm saying as the umpire has the ball back in the middle of the ground and we are underway again. Eight point lead to Richmond. One out by McMahon. Tapped it forward. In goes Monaghan trying to chase after it. Also going with her is Rudin. Umpire says holding infringement. And it's a free kick going the way of... Well, he pointed the way of the Tigers and realised his mistake and pointed the way of the Bulldogs and Jolly. And Jolly pulls the kick out to Hannah Scott. Hannah Scott stabs at it, making the lead there. As, uh, I think what I mean, Sparky slaps the ball along the ground. We're around about uh, a good... 
25 metres out from goal. Now taken away from the Tigers with a hurry kick by Grace Campbell. Going to be intercepted, taken away by Bailey Hunt, who goes over the head of a few players, bouncing towards the goal square, towards the forward pocket. In goes Sarah Jolly, went sliding on hands and knees. Couldn't quite pick it up. Seen over the boundary line by Hannah McLaren. Over and out. And I should say the tall player there in the Bulldogs forward line is Celine Moody. I keep thinking of Lauren Sparks. I see tall blonde hair going, oh, it's Sparky. No, Sparky is not there. Yeah, She's the at the other end. end of the ground. <laughs> Moody's got one sock up. Sparky doesn't. Well, that's always helpful. As Spot the difference. Moody brings it down. Hurry kick away, getting dumped. Lisa Davey looking for Grace Egan through her hands with a burst of speed. Davies gets mown down. Taylor Stall to Egan. Back to Taylor Stall. I keep calling her Taylor. I don't know why. Taylor Stall now goes up the line, flying through the air and taking a mark. Emily Paterno. The former St Kilda Shark footballer. Paterno on the right boot. Goes up the line. And it ain't that great, that kick. Picked off easily by Nicole McMahon. McMahon now to Sparky. There she is. That one. If, if they win, <laughs> it's a Sparky selfie, remember? Yeah. Lauren Spark now comes back in board. Well, that could be, that should be 50, and no. That's bad umpiring. Uh, or practical umpiring, as it's called well, now. Yeah, I think it's just because there's so much niggle. Uh, Hannah Scott went up the line and across now to Kimberly Rennie, who now kicks it inside 50. McCure Chat went over her head. Cleaned up by Monaghan, gave away the hand pass. Now they kick up the line, a little too much juice on the kick as she was trying to find Grace Campbell. And a mark taken by the Doggies and by Jesse Davies. So Jesse Davies needs to get something going for the Doggies at the five and a half minute mark of this third term. Easy mark back there for the Tigers. Cleaned up there by Rebecca Miller. Miller found the intended target in Dempsey. Dempsey working it wider still. Going for a run, Lisa Davy. Now trying to spot up Brant Catasano. Brant Catasano got to dance around one, does well. Hand pass to McEwa Chout. McEwa Chout thought about a bounce, went for a run instead because she saw Sabrina on the lead. Sabrina takes the mark. 54 metres out from goal. Umpire gives her the hurry up, says you got to play on. Kicks it towards the forward pocket. Spark flew through the air, got the fist in there. Ball hit the ground, trying to weave through traffic and dispossess the ball. But Turno, and a free kick going the way of the doggies out of that. Match analyst Lisa Kiwi Roper. Yeah, that was really awesome play from Richmond. They, um, you know, set up their structure and switched it across the back 50 and then up the other wing. And um, the ball into Sabs, I didn't think it was touched, but uh, I guess the umpires are closer to the ball, so they have play. They called that a play on. Otherwise, I think it would have been a better inside 50 feed. Hannah Scott tries to clean things up here. Whoops, through the legs there of uh, the player in Davies. Umpire says too high, free kick going the way of the dogs. Annabelle Scott takes that. Scotty gets the hand pass off. One Scott to the other Scott. Annabelle to Hannah Scott. We're attacking alphabetically. And now it goes up the line. And the ball is just touched off the fingertips, according to the umpire. And uh, out of bounds, and we'll call for a throw in. Here's our match analyst, now all rugged up, Nee Felton. Yeah, put the jacket on. It's definitely not 18 degrees. So, um, really got to, whoever's manning the scoreboard. Do it, do better. But um, <laughs> yeah, I think Richmond's ball movement is looking really good in their quarter, um, in this quarter. Um, and it, yeah, kind of turning into their quarter. Here's the kick up the line. Trying to go at it. Moody was originally up there. McCure Chout comes in to lay a tackle and will call for a ball up. Bye, clears the way. Resets play. Egan. Over the top of the player. And once again, umpire has no choice but to call for a ball up. The game considerably slowed down, Kiwi, since what we saw in the opening term. Yeah, it definitely has. And, um, you know, it can't be any anything to do with the, the heat. It just perhaps has been this brutal off-the-ball kind of tackles that some of them have uh, perhaps spent extra energy on. <laughs> yes, uh some off the ball stuff happening here at VU Witten Oval. Let's drop down to 17 degrees on the scoreboard. It's getting there. <laughs> <laughs> Slowly catching up to us. Yeah. We wait for it to be thrown back into play. Half forward flank here for the doggies. McMahon brought it down. Brennan gave the Donogie to one, gave the Donogie to another. Then kicked it in board. That's a lovely ball. 
Hits up the target, and that target was Miller, who went for a run. Then draw the play. Oh, went to McEwa Chow, hit her in the back, but still had time to clean it up. Then goes with a little kick over the top to Brown Catasano, who got it across to McEwa Chow. McEwa Chow runs inside 50 from 45 metres out, elected to pull the kick instead. Ball fell short, spark under pressure, had to get that chain of hand passes away. And the doggies just get out of defence on that one. Three hand passes and a kick to find safety. And I think that will be Waters just screaming, coming out of the back line. Pardon me, it was Mackey instead. And when she went, it was turned over. And Egan now took it away for the Tigers. Bomb long, nothing on. And the Dogs will clean up in defence again. Taking it this time. Sandral finding Emma McKay. McKay now goes up the line. Leaping for it. Sarah Last bounced off her chest and went over the boundary line. And out of bounds, match analyst is Nee Felton. Yeah, I think um, Bulldog's getting out of trouble there in the back line just because uh, the Richmond player elected to take advantage, but there's nothing really doing. So um, good brain fade for the Bulldogs, but um, yeah, haven't really been able to do anything with it. Trying to come through there. Whoop, maybe almost taken too high. It was Jax. The umpire said, nope. He's just circling around, blows the whistle and says, I'll have the football back. I think where Richmond are looking better as well is they're hitting heaps more targets and it's that run and carry um, down the wing that's looking really good and working really well for them. Trying to come through there and running over the ball, Grace Egan. Coming in to lay a tackle once more. Seymour umpire says holding the football. Free kick going the way of the Tigers. Richmond lead by eight points, 2-9 to 2-1. Gets on the right, going in the Brennan direction, over her head. Lalofi cleans up here, gets caught, but gets the hand pass away in time to Gavilus. Gavilus smart to Jolly. Jolly says, come towards me, someone present. And Jolly, defensive side of centre, says, what the heck have I got on? And Alexis has to go sideways instead to Moody. Moody. Gets on the right, towards the half forward flank position. Two Tigers, they don't talk. Ball hits the ground. McLaren immediately wrapped up. And the umpire has no choice but to call for a ball up. McMahon laying the tackle. Here's Coach Kiwi. Yeah, it looks like um, Bulldogs have actually been instructed to slow it down a bit. But um, I don't know if you ask me, they're down on the scoreboard. They want to move it quickly, not let Richmond set up enough numbers behind the ball. Jolly on the left. Clever kick, inside 50, Paul got out the back, chasing after it is Sarah Last, she'll clean up, but the cavalry's coming at her, she got caught, hand pass away, trying to make a go of it is Rennie, towards the top of the goal square, went through uh, a set of hands there, McMahon, McMahon, the ruck with a snap! Nicole McMahon on an acute angle from about six metres out has put it through and made it a two-point ball game, Nee Felton. Yeah, beautiful kick. It kind of, um, it was a bit dinky, but it bounced perfectly and um, worked out really well. And you could tell, I think um, it was good of McMahon to just know that she was closest to goal and she might as well have a ping at that point um, and not kind of panic and look around for somebody to dish it off to because um, I reckon it would have been a turnover then. So yeah, well, really well done by McMahon. Um, and I think... Yeah, but earlier we could see Sarah Jolly asking people to present. I think that kind of um, encapsulates what's going wrong with the Bulldogs at the moment. It's just that nobody's kind of providing smart options. Um, but yeah, at least getting the chaos ball can at least lead to a goal. 3-1-19 to 2-9-21. Two-point lead to Richmond over the Bulldogs. Umpire says a free kick in the middle of the ground for a holding infringement. Going the way of Rudin, who will clean up here for the Bulldogs. A chance for them to try and create something. But me, Crundle, I think it might be wearing the 36. Decides to get going quickly. On the right. Long it is towards the centre half forward. Came off hands. <laughs> Jolly is lurking around if they can find her. Ward went in there. Couldn't quite squeeze it out. Now a bomb from Ashley Gunn. Oh, is that one uh, little nudge in the back? No, it isn't. The ball's come out. Here's a hurry snap by Danuccio. And a mark taken by the Tigers. Running at full speed, Kate Dempsey nearly took out the fence on the way through. And uh, she'll just collect her thoughts and bring the ball back into play. 13 minutes gone in the third term. Alexa run it back in. McCure Chout is the intended target. Pack of five, came off hands. And now all wrapped up, courtesy of Bailey Hunt jumping in there and all over the top. Umpire says holding the football. An interesting decision, Coach Kiwi. 
Lucky Coach Kiwi. Yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> sorry, I was surprised you let that play on because she didn't come from, but come from behind the mark when she uh, played advantage. But anyway, um, yeah, Richmond, their they're lack of communication, they're spoiling each other when they're um, going up for the balls in the back line. They've got to sort that out. Bailey Hunt goes in there, has to beat two, does beat two Hunt, but her kick is a Barry Crocker. It is off the side of the boot and out of bounds on the full. Yeah, not, uh, not great. <laughs> Dempsey. You'll end up in the Vafferfords if you kick like that. Yeah, that was, especially when there was um, a lot of people in, in the hot spot, and I feel like it was probably worth taking your chances there instead of blazing away and kicking it out of bounds. Okay, Dempsey to bring the ball back into play. Kuichel with a fly from behind. Couldn't quite bring it in. Close towards the boundary line. Phoebe Monaghan gets bumped off of it. Legavalis. And then gets seen over the boundary line and out of bounds. And that's where we'll call for a throw in. 52 metres out from the Bulldogs goal. Have they flicked the switch? Have they turned it on in the latter stages of this third term. Two points of difference. It's a great game here at Witten Oval. Moody brought it to ground. Hurried hand pass, uh, hurry kick out is partially smothered from Bailey Hunt. Close towards the boundary line. Cody Jacks goes running after it. Gets seen over and out. And we'll call for a throw in. Your thoughts, Coach Kiwi? Yeah, I think just um, that decision making down there under pressure, they should have um, got to put the ball on the boot instead of trying a silly little, um, I don't know what she was thinking, <laughs> three metre kick. Moody, then taking it momentarily is Crundle. She's all wrapped up. In fact, by the look of the player, because I'm watching from a distance, it almost looks like Angelica Gogos. I think it is. So, because we didn't have a 36 on our team sheet, and I can't see 27 anywhere. So my gut instinct, it might be actually Angelica Gogos, who's actually wearing the 36. Anyway, the ball is taken back. Moody, Monaghan. Monaghan <laughs> loses it, and the umpire says it's holding the football. Salim Moody now gave it across. Is they going to pay advantage? No, has to bring it back behind the mark. Reset again. Just watching the Bulldogs bench, both Sparky and um, Hannah Scott are off. So looking to remedy that as Lauren Spark comes along. And I think Bailey Hunt also, who is I correct on the boundary? Oh, no, that's 41, pardon yeah. me. That's, uh, that's Annabelle Scott to come back on. McCure Chowd. Kicks it. Intercepted by Salim Moody. Has a second crack at going Huge inside kick. 50. Massive kick. Near the goal square. Oh, they've got a player on here. If they can get it out to uh, Crundle, they can't. And uh, it's all going to be stacks on the pill. Umpire's going to call for a ball up. Nee Felton. Yeah, just watching the Bulldogs, it was Danuccio and Gavalis, I think, running both running at the contest in like pretty much the exact same position. I just feel like it's that sort of um, positioning that if the Bulldogs are able to um, think about that a little bit more, move around, um, is really going to benefit them coming into the latter stages of the game. Tigers in the back line, almost shank the kick going in the way of Grace Egan. Egan with the fluoro boots goes up the line to Phoebe Monaghan. Monaghan sees a kick McCoy Chout on and she marks it. Half back flank has Bailey as an option. Bailey takes the mark. It's chip, chip, chip up the line at the moment. Bailey. Now for Frederick. <laughs> it's like, get out of my road. It's a presence coming at you. Sabrina Frederick looking for Katie Brennan who kind of pulled away at the last half a second of going for that. Probably worried about getting bashed. <laughs> and uh, taken away by Rudin, who kicks up the line. Frederick's there. They can get it to her with a hand pass, but they're looking to go to ground Gabrielle Seymour. And we'll call for a ball up. Well, and there's a little bit of push and shove near the boundary line. Louise Bibby having her say with a player coming through in uh, Anna McLaren. No love lost between the Dogs and the Tigers tonight. Trying to jump in over the top. Grace Gamble. Umpire blows the whistle and will call for another ball up. The stoppage is coming up plenty in the second half. We'll go again for Moody versus Seymour. Call that a draw and that hit out. Coming through though is Bibby. Gets it across. Now Mackey and McKay. And McKay got it inside 50 only for it to be intercepted and sent back from whence it came by Jenna Colwell. Using Graham to switch. Up the line. Mark take it. Almost going to spin around and go Emma Gunn. And then she realised, oops, there was someone in front of me. And a run down! 
Free kick going the way of the doggies. They're going to pay advantage. Good to see Danuccio. Got it to Hannah Scott. Hannah Scott from 65 metres out from goal. Goes towards the top of the goal square. It's a two-on-one situation. McMahon's got to go. She's brought to ground. The ball is trapped between her legs. Gives off the hand pass. McCarley Award with a tight snap is away to the right. One behind. And it brings it back to a one-point ball game. Coach Kiwi. Yeah, look, um, that, that, I'm surprised they got a score out of that. But, um, you know, they were outnumbered, clearly outnumbered. But they did well. And um, which we just, I don't know, they're just losing their feet too, too easily. They need to um, stand up, play some better ball. The ball is kicked back into play. It was at the feet of Brennan who couldn't pick it up. Brennan going for the chase now and does run down her opponent in Emma Mackey. Mackey, McKay. Oh, McKay. As we'll get ready to throw the ball back in. 40 metres out from goal. Jess Kennedy's getting a little bit of a push and shove on at the moment. It's thrown back in. It's captain v captain, really. And Kennedy and McKay. Oh, Mackey, pardon me. McKay. I'm, just, I'm obsessed with McKay or Mackey at the moment as the ball is thrown in. Everyone's going to jump on top of it, including Miller. Finally gets that pass out to Egan. Egan out towards center wing. Spark will run onto it for the Dogs. Got caught, but got a kick away. And McKay now takes the mark. As the siren sounds for three-quarter time here at VU Witten Oval. And uh, we got a ball game here. It is the Western Bulldogs 3-2-20, Richmond 2-9-21. Nick Fulton, we cannot pick aside these two teams. No, they're both playing um, really evenly, and I think the physicality of the game is not only because of the feeling in it, but just the fact that um, they're so evenly matched that I think both teams are getting a little bit frustrated not being able to do exactly what they want. Um, it's weird to see the fact that the Bulldogs are in the game because of accuracy on the scoreboard. I've, I don't know if I've ever witnessed this before. So this is a really big day for me, personally. Um, I, think, I think that was the case when you beat... Geelong uh, yes, a, actually, a few yeah. weeks ago uh, was it was a terrible conditions on that day, but you kicked more accurately and you won the game. Yeah, so that's really I think I mean regardless of how the next quarter plays out, as long as they don't um, suddenly turn it around and kick themselves out of it, touch wood. Um, I think that's something that can be really pleased with, especially I mean looking at these sides on paper, you'd be like, oh okay, awesome, Richmond are going to be the ones um, heavy on the scoreboard just because of who they've got in their forward line, but I think it's. A good testament. I think um, Sparky is keeping Frederick pretty quiet. Mm. Um, she hasn't had. I mean, she's had a few really good marks, and like you're talking about before, really imposed her presence. But she hasn't. There hasn't been like a particular moment where you're like, "Oh my God, there she is." Um, but I think both sides, a little bit with their decision making, talk. Um, if they can uh, spread out a little bit more, it's going to help free up the game for them, give them more options. Um, and if Richmond can get that run and carry like we saw in that last quarter then going um, and then hit those targets moving forward, they're a real chance. And Bulldogs just need to kind of, I don't know, I just really feel for when Sarah Jolly was like, move around because it kind of encapsulated the whole feeling of watching the Bulldogs at the moment. It's just no one's really, there's no smart options. So both teams have little things to remedy. Um, hopefully both fix them up so we can have a really, really good last quarter. We'll get Coach Kiwi's thoughts on the other side of this break, but before we hit the break, a three-quarter time score from Darwin. NT Thunder, 3-4-22. Trail Carlton, 6-7-43. Interesting. Hasn't changed too much. No, it's uh, Carlton. I think they've just slightly extended their lead. So, uh, but at the Blues Park, the bus in the final quarter, they should be home with that margin. We'll take an opportunity to take a break. It's a one-point lead to Richmond over the Western Bulldogs here in our match of the day. Premiership coach Paul Roos talks teamwork, leadership and creating a winning culture. One of the smartest minds in football talks about his life and the lessons he's learned on the next RecLink Sporting Chance Night. If you're in sport or business, come and learn from one of the best. It's on Wednesday, August 14 at the Hoppers Club. Pelham Drive, Hoppers Crossing. Tickets just $25, but bookings are a must. Call 9419-6672 and join Paul Roos. Reclink, including the unincluded. 
The end of financial year sales have begun at Brighton Mazda, and you don't want to miss it. Get incredible value across all new and demo Mazda, like huge discounts on run-out models, end of financial year bonuses, and drive-away deals across our range of SUVs, utes, sedans, and hatches. So don't miss a deal. Get in first and start your financial year with a brand new car from Brighton Mazda. SUV Central, where excellence costs no more. T's and C's apply. LMCT 10963. Ho, ho, ho! Go, you good thing! It's Christmas in July at the Meadows. Exhilarating greyhound racing, a delicious Christmas buffet, and jumping castles for kids every Saturday night in July. Book now at meadows.org.au. Need a new car battery? RACB comes to you seven days a week. Book your installation online in just minutes, and they'll do the rest. To book, visit racb.com.au slash batteries. There's jumpers, hoodies, and tees for you Leaguetees.com.au is your place for retro footy gear with designs created by local artists that you won't find anywhere else. Plus, their unique range of women's footy tees help raise funds for Indigenous literacy programs. Get online and start shopping today. Leaguetees.com.au Or SN Carnival 2 is the V. This is the Swiss Wellness VFL Women's Match of the Day on RSN Carnival 2, WARFradio.com. The VFL app and today, Facebook live stream by facebook.com forward slash WARF Radio. Richmond 2921, lead by a solitary point. The Western Bulldogs 3-2-20 with her thoughts on that third quarter. Here is the legend herself, Coach Kiwi. Yeah, look, I thought um, Richmond controlled the football a lot better. Their, their ball movement and especially through the back line and up up the wing was a lot more precise and um, they hit their targets they got into space really really well just getting it into their forward 50 just the quality was a bit lower and um, and add to that the pressure that obviously Hannah Scott and um, Lauren Smart are uh, Sparky sorry uh, <laughs> sorry granny mentioned you instead but uh, Sparky are providing in the back line is um, you know keeping Bulldogs in this game and I think, um, you know, Richmond have really got to pull out all stops now and make up for all those misses earlier on in the game because, you know, they had 11 scoring shots to five and uh, only leading by one point on the scoreboard. So, um, you know, I'm certain that their, um, their forward coach will be ripping into them. And um, at the same token, I think uh, the, all the Bulldog line coaches are probably giving them all a bit of a pat on the back and telling them to hold into this game because they really are. They're staying in it. They're um, not giving up. They're not backing down from anything. <laughs> certainly off the ball, they're not backing down from anything in that area as well. So um, the Tigers certainly know that um, it's not coming easy for them. And, of course, this game being streamed by Facebook.com forward slash WARF Radio. Hello to those watching, including Bernie, who's listening in. Uh, David Casselis, hashtag Be More Bulldog, he says. Julie Nash, Rebecca Miller, go you good thing. Greg Skeed and the one and only... Emma Grant is uh, watching online, a Bendigo Thunder footballer who, of course, played alongside the likes of Jess Kennedy. Emma Grant is watching online. It's great to have the economy Rebecca, vice captain watching. We've got a Rebecca Miller on the field. Well, someone must be hacking her account. Uh, no, 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 no. They said Rebecca Miller, go you good thing, was one of oh, the supporters. Okay. As we're underway here um, for the final quarter at VU my- Witten Oval. Welsh duck friend in Sydney, I wonder. <laughs> Coming away with it. Oh, it's McLeod who went on the first. McLeod went long towards the top of the goal square. Strong mark in defence for the Tigers. And uh, taking it there and cleaning up was Lisa Davey. It was a great grab under pressure. Was going for Katie Brennan. Came off her hands. Brent Catasano gets turned over. Umpire says play on. A kick McEwen Chow trying to put some pressure on Nicole McMahon. McMahon had to go backwards to try and go forwards. Here's a hurry kick from the dogs towards centre half forward. Bounces through the jolly. Had to get rid of one. Got caught by the other in McLaren. Got boot to ball barely. Ball hit the deck. Umpire says too high. Free kick. And it's going the way of the dogs. And he gives it back to the player in Annabelle Scott, who gave it to the umpire, going, oh, ball up. No, it's your free kick. And Scott gives away to Hannah Scott. Again, they attack alphabetically. Annabelle Scott to Hannah Scott, who goes long towards the hot spot at about uh, 25 metres out from goal. A kick, McEwen Chowder brought it to ground. A little bit of holding on going there. Which way? And I think it might be Richmond's way. We just wait for the umpire to signal. He is... 
He's pointing to the dogs. <laughs> I saw I saw everything <laughs> but, but the pointing. I was like, yeah, Come on, same. Man. He's signaling a thousand things, but not who's free it is. Just quietly, if the umpire's department might just want to just watch back this video and just go, there's a little few things we've got to tidy up here, boys, just to make sure that, you know, no confusion and everyone's good. Do they pack a spear pee? A what? Spear pee for the whistle. Uh, yeah, you always back it. You always back. You always have a spare whistle when you umpire, and it's not like a word of a lie either. Because I uh, thought they've probably worn one out. Yeah. Michaela Ward gets very close to the player on the mark from 35 meters out. It goes left, and it is a minor score, and that means we are all tied up here in our VFL Women's Match of the Day Twilight Game at VU Witten Noble. 3-3-21, the Western Bulldogs. Richmond 2-9-21. Here's Nick Felton. Yeah, I think I'm um, really primed for obviously a tight last quarter. Be interesting to see how Richmond go getting this out of their 50. Here's the kick. Yeah, goes Trimbles. long towards the halfback flank for Katie Brennan, who now gets it. Goes for the hand pass in board. They might be Bailey looking for. Gets wrapped up immediately on this occasion by Taylor Danuccio. And will call for the football back right underneath the light tower. Yeah, difficult to see at this time of day when it's quite like... Lights are on, but I don't know. I'm, I'm struggling a little bit. I'd say the Nobody's umpire's home. wearing grey as well. <laughs> Ball is thrown back in and trying to get involved. On the outside of the pack there was Celine Moody. But the umpire says, uh, I'll take the footy back, please, and we'll go again. Moody wins the tap. In towards the corridor. Having to spin around. Oh, ripped off of it is Gabalos, and the umpire says... Or Gavalis, whichever way you want to say it. She gives away a free kick to the Tigers. And it's taken away by Jenna Colwell. Works wide. Putting up Tamara Smith. Scores level here at the moment. Three minutes gone in the final term. Taylor Stahl takes it. Gives the hand pass over the top to Frank Catasano. Stahl calls back for it. Goes for the run. Kicks up the line. Now, whistle's been blown. She was going to Monaghan. And it will be a free kick. For a push off the ball going the way of well, Taylor Stall. Would that be downfield? That'd be down downfield the field. then. Yeah. yeah. So, again, umpiring department might just want to take a little close look at this tape and just uh, examine a few things. Looking for Monaghan. Monaghan gets pulled to ground. Hand pass away. Cavalis going through there. Monaghan taken away, though. Scott pumps it long up the line. Oh, good work then. And a mark taken by Tamara Smith. He's been working well at the half-back line for the Tigers. Gets the hurry up from the umpire. Dancing around then on the left boot. Very close to the boundary line. Is it out of bounds on the full? We watch the boundary umpire. Indeed it is. And it's a free kick going the way of Ali Gavalis. Here's Nee Felton. I don't... I don't know what to say. Is it, is it, is it just... just yeah. much of, much is just. it just me or is it dark in corners? Yes. I don't know. I feel like it is. I feel like it's dark yeah. over there as well. And if they could just come and play on this wing. That's what I'm going <laughs> to bla blame my brain blank on. <laughs> as Brennan now decides to come back in board. Oh, flying through the air there is Taylor Danuccio. Got away from her. Now taken away Ooh. by the Tigers. Originally by Bailey. Players going crashing down. You can hear the ooh from Coach Kiwi. She'll explain what happened in a moment. Coming through Grace Egan. Can't get it out. Bailey ripped to ground. Bailey Hunt, that is. Laura Bailey goes in. Enough Baileys for some Baileys and cream, and the umpire says we'll call for a ball up. What did you see earlier, Coach Kiwi? Yeah, it was a um, bullet pass from Monaghan's boot straight into the belly of one of the girls, only standing about three metres off here. So, so that, I felt the impact. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that will sting a little as Kennedy tries to get on the footy for the Tigers. Very close to the boundary line. She's being harassed, harassed, harassed. And getting to pick it up was Caitlin Betts. She did well out there but Kennedy will steal it back from her after she had some assistance and there's a push and the umpire says that'll be a free kick going the way of the Bulldogs. The Lofi now has it and she is on the halfback flank near the scoreboard here which used to be the old wooden scoreboard and had a canteen underneath as the kick is, goes out of bounds of the full. And I can tell you about that old scoreboard they had a canteen underneath there and I swear the vinegar for their chips was industrial strength. The vinegar <laughs> went through the bag every time. Put hairs on your chest. <laughs> yeah. As we wait for the ball to be brought back into play, 
Jess Kennedy, who was our guest this week on the Women's Australian Rules Football Radio podcast, followed on Spotify or on the RSN website. You can listen back to it. It was a good chat. Kick those, partially smothered, and Jolly will take it away. Her kick is smothered. The ricochet goes to a kick, Makua Chout. Get across to Brown Catasano, who lost control of it and had to try and get a hand pass away hurriedly. Denuccio tries to squeeze her way through. Little dribble kick up the line. Tigers will clean it up, and they will work it towards the halfback flank broadcast side. Jackie Graham finds the intended target. And they'll move it with a long kick up the line. Cody Jacks finds the pack and will come off hands. About uh, 80 metres out from the Tigers' goal. 3-3-21, the Bulldogs. Richmond, 2-9-21. Here is Coach Kiwi. Yeah, I'm looking at the shadows on the ground. Um, I'm pretty sure that that's not quality for a night game. Just saying. Let alone. I've got I a feeling see. There's, a few more, <laughs> there's a few more lights, I think, for the AFLW. I think they bring some in. They, yeah, they bring the a TV. crane in. But yeah, um, I would thought this would be in the same rules, though. I think it's supposed to be 500 lux. Yeah, some rules might be slightly bent. Oh, Frederick had it momentarily oh. topped it. Oh, then she slipped over when she picked it up. Went with the tunnable out the back. They're screaming for throwing the football. Umpire won't pay into it. In goes Laura Bailey. And the umpire now circling his spark watches on and says we'll call for a ball up. Just watching um, Hannah Scott behind the ball before giving to a bit of a calf stretch, maybe. A bit of cramp. Yeah, a bit of cramp towards the end of the game. McMahon slaps it around. Ball almost thrown out of the pack. Lalofi takes it away, put it on the left boot. Awkward bounce. Oh. Frederick bounced away from her. Hand pass away. I think it was Ward there. Now Jolly, off the ground, soccer style, is going to be cleaned up, though, and taken by the 23 and Tamara Smith. Now they kick it inside 50. Lalofi in front. Had a steam train coming at her. Yeah, that, stood was, her ground. that was gutsy. And decides to switch towards the back pocket. Should have been a better ball in. There was more time to line up somebody instead of just bombing away. Doggies moving up the line. Mark taken on this occasion by Bailey Hunt. Bailey Hunt goes up the line. Works out okay. Find Mary Sandrell. Sandrell underneath the light tower. Doug Hawkins wing half back flank. Dark wing. Comes to Hunt. Pardon me, Hannah Scott rather. Went up the line, now taking the mark. Kimberly Rennie. Furthest from our commentary position, right up on level three here of the next to the Witten stand, which is a long, long way away from play. Michaela Ward gets dumped. Hurry kick off the boot from the dogs. Goes inside 50, but no one home. And I think that's Jackie Graham will clean up here. Looking for Brown Catasano to run onto it. She does. Got to get rid of one, nearly out the shorts, pulled down, got rid of a second, and she forgot to take a bounce. Oh, that was a bit tight from where she actually picked it up. But it was brought into her hands, it was only about top of the 50, wasn't it? Ah, uh, yeah, I just think. inside the 50, so mm. yeah, I'd, you have to get the ruler out for that. Based off the kicks, if it's relative to kicks that we've been calling 15 metres. <laughs> yes, I true. feel like... <laughs> the umpires have got a short 15. Uh, yeah. As the, t the dogs went inside 50, then it came back out again, and we're now back on centre wing as the ball bobbles around. It's a chaos ball at the moment. Here's the kick by Gogos. Now it's going to be marked. It's taken by Sarah Jolly. She's from 52 metres out. Has someone on in the pockets. And taking the mark here is Jess Crundle. Any score will put the doggies up. Maybe the pass isn't the smartest option at this situation. In goes Ward. Can't squeeze it out. Trying to find uh, Gavalis. Jolly is there. Hand pass backwards. One step kick. Emma McKay towards the top of the square. And a mark taken with the doggies. 12 metres out directly in front. And going back to have a shot is the number 24 in Kimberly Rennie. I'm not sure who's on the mark, but she made the terrible error of going back and guarding the goal line instead of her player and as i've told some junior players in afl you don't need a goal kicker they'll kick above your head a goalkeeper like soccer bang goal then you need to man up on the player and you know that towel she got she's got that'll come down as an uncontested mark i'm sure 
as it now goes to the Western Bulldogs, 4-3-27, Richmond 2-9-21. The Tigers the have not lost yet this season. They're now on the verge of their first loss in a match for Premiership points. Here's Neve Felton. Yeah, I'm uh, pretty stoked with that <laughs> as a Bulldog supporter. I think um, really good with Kim Rennie rotating um, through the ruck and forward. That's exactly what you wanted to do. Um, but like we said, it was pretty much an uncontested mark just because the um, Richmond player didn't position as well. I was a bit disappointed with Crundle. Um, she was never going to have a shot there. I think at this stage in the game, a point would have been handy. Um, but yeah, she kind of angled like she was always going to... Um, look for an option to give off. So interesting that no one really presented one for her. Chaos ball in the middle of the ground. Bailey Hunt tried to get in there to lay the tackle. Umpire's blown the whistle and said holding the football, free kick for the dogs. Bailey Hunt with a pill. Looking left, looking right. Says calm down, calm down. And then proceeds to kick sideways and backwards. Taking it now is Butler. Who Goes out towards the wing, Doug Hawkins wing. Sandra with a footy. Goes up the line. A little bit of holding going on there. Sliding through Rebecca Miller. Close towards the boundary line. It will go over and out now. 12 and a half and it's gone in this final term. Bulldogs uh, lead by a goal, but Coach Kiwi far from over. Yeah, definitely far from over. Um, Bulldogs are looking really smart just then hitting up the short options. And as soon as they go long, they just can't keep control of it and um you know i just don't think they've got the aerial markers that um there is required if you want to play a long ball game but let's try to go after it they try to go for the kick off the ground there and the umpire has blown the whistle i wonder what for it says for holding decision and emma gunn to get the resulting free kick emma gunn former teammate of knee falton now goes long towards <laughs> the half forward flank <laughs> well you know you couple, play, couple trading sessions you, well that that counts <laughs> as Umpire blows the whistle and calls for the ball back 45 metres out from the Tigers' goal. Brennan moved onto the ball. Wanted to be first to it there, missed out on it. McLeod picked it up cleanly, then put it on the left boot, just dribbled it, but only as far as Jackie Graham. It went back to Egan. And now they switch it around. Taking a mark is Tamara Smith, just forward of centre. Smith. Going in the Sabrina Frederick direction. Oop, just short of her. Spark was coming after her as well. And the ball gets tracked in. And the umpire is going to call for a ball up. So, oh, 55 metres out from the Richmond goal. Here's Coach Kiwi. Yeah, it's, um, it looks like Richmond are trying to get a bit of composure and try and feed a good ball in. They're yet to get into that forward 50. And uh, I think once they do, that's what they're looking for is a good option. As, once again, we'll call for another ball up. Thoughts from birthday girl for next week, Nee Felton? Yes, oh my God. Um, very exciting. Um, uh, yeah, the game's really slowed down. I don't know, I think we were talking about it before, the kind of off-the-ball stuff that players have been using their energy on, because we're seeing a lot less of that at the moment. And Sandra takes the mark back there for the Dogs, doing well. 45 up in defensive goal. Now on the right boot, elects to come to the grandstand side. A little nudge under the ball. Yes, according to the umpire, Taylor Stall gets the resulting free kick. Taylor Stall for the Tigers. Looking for some options. Elects to work wide with the kick. And is good. Finds Laura Bailey. Laura Bailey decides to come back in. Ball was looking for Stall. Oh, Lalofi gets cleaned out, ironed out. And they immediately come run to her. They run to Stall. Stall gets involved. There's a bit of a throw. It gets a bit ugly. And now Karma heads for the moment. That's how I remember her playing for Newtown. Uh -huh. Oh, dear, oh me. Taylor Stall, who, of course, played for the Bass Coast Breakers, inside to the AFLW list for Richmond. Lalovi was coming, sliding at it. Stall just went on and, with the bump, cleaned her right out on the way through. Yeah, still had no need to go in the way that she did, but um, yeah, that's kind of how I remember her playing sort of similar to that a few years ago in the Sydney competition and thought she might have grown out of it a little bit. She, um, she's she been playing really well this season and um, and a lot less of that kind of, but this game has just been about the niggle. Yeah, and, it's um, been a lot of, you know, and it's just another occasion. Oh, they've given a 50 for it too. Yeah, yeah. So if Sarah Black is watching from the afl.com.au, there's your lead, Sarah. Niggle between the Bulldogs and Tigers. Wait till it boils over at <laughs> AFLW level. Bring the gloves <laughs> and bring the boxing ring as the ball is kicked off hands. Goes inside 50. 
Yeah, mouth guard's mandatory. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> Umpire blows the whistle. More call for a ball up. Well, that sort of depends if so, um, each to... team gets to play each other as well. Yeah. Hopefully they put us in the same conference. Tell the tribunal chairman, take, uh, uh, you're going to be required <laughs> in for this evening. Cancel all plans. <laughs> as in goes McLeod. McLeod runs onto it. Oh, McLeod oh, flying shot at no. goal. Just lost her... Footing at the right moment, the ball bounced and went to the right. But yeah. that means a seven-point margin, handy a handy point, point Nee Felton. Yes, I think um, I said I saw Kirst McLeod had a few good touches at the start of the game. I was like, she's primed for a big one. I haven't really seen that much of her since. But um, a handy point might uh, might save it. She might book into the match. 4-4-28 to 2-9-21 as the kick is brought back into play from the Tigers looking for Akek Makua Chow. Had it, then got punched out of her hands. The umpire says that is a mark claimed. So she's got three minutes. She's really got to get a wriggle on because they've got to get a score and then get a score again. So Makua Chow, flat mongrel punt going up the line. Worked out okay. Bounced and taken on the second bite by Colwell. Jenna Colwell, centre wing, broadcast side. Pulls the kick, looking for Sabrina Frederick. Too much juice on the kick again. Went through her hands. Has to go back and get it. Thought about the pass to Laura yeah. Bailey. Elected to go long instead. Waiting for it, Phoebe Monaghan. Dropped it. Has to go back again. Got someone on her hammer. Gets taken maybe without the football. Close towards the boundary line. They're appealing. Saying it was deliberate. And the umpire says, uh-uh. We'll throw the football back in next to the right-hand point post. Oh. Coach Kiwi. Well, Monaghan was held off the ball and early in the game. They yeah. blew the whistle a thousand times for that. So. Yeah, they said oh, I thought I it was a free kick. Right. The, yeah. the, the P's run out and they forgot Get their the spare P's one. the out. <laughs> As we wait for the ball to be thrown back into play, Colwell held in the rack by Spark. It was too obvious. It was way too obvious. Oh, they're making up for the other one. It's a free <laughs> kick. Yeah, you yeah. could see the jumper go back and her shoulder go back. Oh, and no. it's like, yeah... That was there. Um, when you pull the jumper, Dad's always like, oh, you can see through it if they pulled it too much. I feel like it was a little bit of that. So, Jenna Colwell, two it's minutes to out. go. It's further out than if uh, Monaghan got the other three yeah. further up. So, but, uh, slow the a, game down. A chance to make it a one-point ball game. Jenna Colwell kicks. Good. It's oh, short. short. Punched away for a point. Draw is still on the table though, folks. Nearly no, no. 18 and a half minutes gone. I was, say, was that a Sparky on the line giving a um, volleyball slam with the ball? In, <laughs> indeed it was. Indeed it was. As the Made ball is brought back into play, looking for Spark. Had it, dropped it. Stacks on the pill. Danuccio goes in there and will call for a ball up. One goal lead to the Dogs. The Dogs love close ones, don't they, here at Witten Oval, Neef <laughs> Elton? Yes, <Elton's>. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's too much. Close ones against Melbourne Uni and Geelong at this ground. Umpire blows the whistle. And let's see what he's indicating. He points one way, then the other way, and then the correct way. And uh, mm -hmm. taking it now is Tala Danuccio. Danuccio chewing up the clock with a minute to go. One goal, the difference. You'd say the win's off the table now for the Tigers, unless they do a seven-point play. Essentially, they'll be oh. aiming for the draw. Crunch! And the umpire calls for a ball up. Well, there's yeah. still energy in those tackles, that's for sure. Yeah, they're going to be That was a real tomorrow. solid sandwich slam. Like, yeah, umpire blows the whistle for time on, but there won't be. The player's taking as long as they can to get off the ground. And I think the umpire's saying, take as long as you can because the clock chews up anyway, and that's our favour. Again, like we said in the game against Essendon and Collingwood when five minutes was killed on the clock, they've got to do something about this time yeah, on and injury rule. They really do. When there's no it's... time on. It's rubbish, and they've got to rewrite the rule. Yeah, it's kind of an... It's a great... Because today yeah. probably was about seven minutes of the game eaten up by players. Uh, well, I mean, she's injured. Go, go see, you can see she's wobbling, and we're not saying that it's it, about the injuries a fake or anything like that, but it's about the time being chewed up. Yeah, yep. it's just, it's Stop just not, it feels like um, it's counterintuitive. Like, it just doesn't make any, and it really takes the wind out of the game. And there goes the siren. siren will go that, now. That, that just robbed Richmond of any chance of tying the game, and that's why yeah, they've got to. Yeah, exactly. The only reason we don't have time on is because of the gender of the players. That's yeah, it. It's, it's so, the only reason. It's, it's, BS. And this player <laughs> genuinely looks injured, but yeah, she was wobbling there's enough the smart players in the league that will milk that a little bit more. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. And why, would, like, why wouldn't you? If the rules there yeah. take advantage of. Absolutely. But, I mean, hopefully Gogos is okay because it looked like she was she's, getting up ready yeah. to go off. She's not looking yeah. well at yeah. all. We're not saying the face fades by no means. She, she no. looked well and truly <laughs> that out. That was a big and, whack. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but um, we've been robbed of maybe one last crack at it for Richmond to try and draw the game. And it really takes the wind out of the sail. It, it like, does. Everyone's really kind it of does. excited and hyped up, and the game's like 
the um, momentum's there and all of a sudden it's like, and I can imagine being a Bulldogs player and kind of like waiting around like, come on, come on, come on, or a Richmond player and yeah. kind of more agitated. Yeah, and again, if let, let's say the clock was stopped, there was probably about 40 seconds to go. That's he makes it even more nervous because all of a sudden, once everyone's cleared and the play resets, everyone's thinking, wow, what are they going to do in this 40 seconds? You know, the Bulldogs have said, we got to get back, and the dogs, uh, you know, how are we going to spread? And, you know, it, it creates excitement. But yeah, exactly. when you see really? the clock chewing down, if you're a Richmond player and you're standing at it and seeing the time go, you go, yeah, it's so what are we supposed to do? What, what are we supposed to do? And, like, one of my favourite things about football, I think, is, like, the theatre of the game and, like, that sort of, like, what can happen because there is so many, like, Varied things and yeah, you're right. You're like once okay, once that play is off and that's been taken care of, time goes back on and everyone's like, Oh my god, like here it is as opposed to yeah, just standing around looking at the clock. It's just it doesn't make any sense to me. Well, remember we used to have twenty five minute straight quarters in the old VWFL and the first season of the VFLW. We had twenty five minutes straight. And um, again, we were still arguing for time on them for, for goals, at least kicked. And now we had the quarter shortened for no reason at all. They just decided to shorten the quarters to 20 yeah. minutes. And again, with, with no time on, the only difference is in the VFL men's, there's time on. In the AFL men's, there's time on. In AFL women's, there's a little bit of time on. The rule's a bit quirky. But in VFLW, we have no yeah, time on for no AFL reason. W, no reason at all. Yeah, AFLW, I can kind of get it because it's hotter or whatever else. Yeah. But um, I, yeah, it doesn't make sense because it's not like you've got your full... Because of the way that the AFLW operates, which, you know, we all yeah. have various penis on. Um, it, it's not like that you've got your full AFLW list who are playing and maybe need shorter games so they don't get as tired. It's like you've got, you want to develop these players, you want to get them used to playing longer games. And we're playing football, so why is it, and it's yeah. not like it's suburb, it's bigger than suburban, so why, it's not like we've got a game straight after this that we have to be ready for. Yeah. And it's like today, the VFL men's, that was time on all normal rules, and they had a game straight after that they had to be ready for. So there's no logical argument for it. I just, I don't get it. <laughs> exactly. There's a few a few games or a few weekends this year where the VFL is before the VFLW. So yeah. clearly having time on is not a problem in the scheduling. Exactly. That's well, it's, it's a disappointing finish, but we don't want to take away from the Western Bulldogs because they've been great today. They've come up against the side with Katie Brennan, with Sabrina Frederick back in the side against the Richmond side that was fairly loaded with good talent. And they've come through, the Bulldogs, and all of a sudden, after they were starting to look a bit wobbly, have now all of a sudden given their aspirations of finishing the top six a good shot in the arm from this game. Yeah, I think, um, you know, Richmond in the first quarter, they just looked really messy. And, you know, in fairness, probably Bulldogs were a bit messy as well. The second quarter, Richmond set up themselves a little bit better, but they had so many opp opportunities that go and missed it. And I think that's where they've lost the game is in the first half of today is um, they've wasted all that time there. And we can't really, I think, they can't really bemoan that last minute um, mm -hmm. with the player down. But, you know, fairness to the Bulldogs, they have stayed in this whole game and had a really good crack at it. They've um, obviously marked up the key players, you know, like S S um, Sabrina and, and KB. And, um, you know, they've done, they've done what they've required to do out here. They've, you know, just stayed in. Um, battled the ball when they could, um, been a bit scrappy around the edges in some. They've been very physical on other occasions. They've probably um, tried to get into the heads of a few of the, the key Tiger players as well with some of the off the ball sort of stuff. But um, they did enough and they did enough to kick the goals and, um, and come out with the four points. So, you know, well done to Bulldogs and sitting at home. And, um, you know, certainly I'm sure before the game, they felt like Richmond came out with a better lineup and um, weren't going to sit down and let them let Richmond dominate at all. So, as I admit, we came into this game today thinking, oh, geez, the Tigers going to win as the Bulldogs off the rail and the Tigers are a runaway force. This is the first loss bar the GWS practice match, um, the first loss of the year for Richmond. So this is like, oh, hey, this is the this is now a cog in their wheel. This is, uh, this is now, um, yeah, it, it puts them back amongst the pack that at four, five, and six trying to chase a top two finish. At the moment, it leaves really Collingwood out in front of the pack Richmond will be behind now on percentage officially. Um, the Southern Saints are up there at the moment. It's probably Collingwood and the Southern Saints battling for the top two. Richmond now, because of their percentage, have a little bit of work to do while trying to fend off the likes of, well, NT Thunder have now slipped, as we've heard today, but try to fend off anyone who might be making a late charge. Hawthorne lost, so they've got a little bit of relief there, but Geelong are now starting to make a charge. Yeah, I think it's a really interesting point in the season where we kind of, the ladder starts... Um, not so much to take shape because teams are dropping back, but you've got these teams that are coming out in front. You can kind of assess 
um, whose performances have been stronger. And I think at this point in the season, when it does turn out to be like, okay, hold, 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 hold the phone. Did 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 Breaking news: The Thunder have beaten Carlton by two points. Oh, right. oh. For a seven five forty seven wow. to Carlton six seven forty three, we thought she was all over. It was like a twenty oh, point margin at three Kiri quarter time. Said they might come back. And the Thunder have Expert come back and beaten <laughs> Carlton. They've done it to them again, beaten them by a kick, wow. twice in the space of a month. Yeah, I hope they've got something fun planned in Darwin for tomorrow. <laughs> see a few crocodiles or something to make them feel better about having a tight loss. Um, yeah, that's not um, ideal for them, but. That is going to hurt. Um, that means the ladder looks like this. We've got an updated ladder as we speak. Oh, bar the results on this being... Carlton right down with um, Williamstown and mm. Darren, won't it? Yeah, it will. It looks like this. Collingwood is on top of the table, 7 and 1. Just, and I mean just, ahead on percentage from the Southern Saints on 7 and 1. The percentage difference, 14%. <sighs> And they're both well over 200, so that, that is very tight. Richmond, with this loss, will still hold on to um, their spot a third on the ladder. They will have a two uh, or have a one-game advantage, sorry, over the NT Thunder. Hawthorne at the moment is sitting in fifth on four and four. Melbourne Uni is sitting in sixth on four and four. Geelong have moved up to seven on four and four. The Western Bulldogs, because they won by such a small margin, at the moment, I think they will be sitting in um, eighth on four and four. Maybe when we calculate the percentage, they might have just jumped the Cats. But all of a sudden, locked at four, at locked at five, six, seven, eight, Hawthorne, Melbourne, Uni, Geelong, Western Bulldogs. That is how it's looking there. Casey Demons are one win behind them. Essendon, mathematically two wins behind them, but weak percentage. And then Carlton, Williamstown, Darabin at the bottom of the table with one and six. Yeah, tight around the middle. But, you yeah. know, if you look at, say, Richmond, you know, I don't know if um, Monique Conti is going to come back and play in the VFL, but they've got nobody else to come back in. Whereas Bulldogs have still got, you know, Bonnie I'm thinking too of good. And Nardi, I think, still to come in as well. There's a couple of others that were picked up um, that, that still haven't come in yet. Yeah, that's I forgot about Bernardi. Yeah. Um, but Bulldogs have got, think, like... Yeah, um, Bulldogs have more. Like, yeah, they've yeah. got Bonnie, who's resting. They've got Brooke Lachlan, who's Blackburn resting. Blackburn is resting. Yeah, Blackburn, we saw yeah. Blackburn, um, Deanna Berry. Hashtag bring back the fringe. Yes. <laughs> so, so, so they've got a few. And I think at the moment, Collingwood and Saints are probably playing their best lineup. Like, I mean, Collingwood, obviously, they can rotate their... Their key players in and out and still have a very solid lineup. And I think St Kilda, you know, they're not penalised by points quite yet. But, yeah. you know, they can play their key lineup each week. So, yeah, the ones sitting around the middle of the table, they're the ones that got to do a bit of juggling and probably maybe change some structure and um, to do enough to get over the line. And if. I was going to say, just a very quick bye to our Facebook uh, live viewers. We've got to leave you at this moment. Our radio listeners are going to leave us in one minute's time. But goodbye to those that have been watching via facebook.com forward slash WAF radio. Keep this Facebook page as a like because we'll be back with Essendon and the GWS Giants next Saturday at 12 p.m. That should be a cracker. For those on the stream, it's goodbye for now. Bye. And, <laughs> and for our uh, radio listeners via RSN.